the best way to steal if you want to steal from a department store. Okay, I've that, that I want to know. You're, you're fucking hidden. How do you beat the system from the inside? I would, I would say two things. No one ever did this that I know of. Two things is one, a distraction. Because oh. we had to deal with like injury, a seizure, or whatever. Like if somebody, because that's all lost too, because they can sue. So if a, a rack falls on their head, you sprain your ankle, you slip and fall. That you have one person do that, pretend to fucking sprain an ankle, because then we're all working on it. Because we only have three or four people at a time. Wow. And so okay. everyone's kind of focused on that. And the other thing is minimal time. The most successful things were grab and go. So frustrating. I'm, tr- I'm trying. I'm trying to do this YouTube stuff and you not to get demonetized. And they tell you if you curse in the first 30 seconds that you, you they, they can't show the thing. They can't give you money for it. So now you got to. Sh- I'm not going to change completely, but I'm going to try to not curse for 30 seconds. We're almost there. Ugh. My God. Anyway, you guys, how are you? Welcome to Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 397. The loss prevention officer, or maybe I'll call it Flim Flam Man. So on on today's episode, I have my friend Joe List. Uh, he has a new special out that you've got to go watch. It's on YouTube, so you already paid for it. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Joe List is one of the best comics in the world. Uh, I don't say that lightly. He's great. Uh, Norm MacDonald uh, says he's better than Red Fox. Um, Jim Carrey once said that Joe List reminds him of a young Joe Lewis. And then people ask him, like, what does that mean? He goes, eh, it's not the best comparison, but how the way Joe Lewis was a good uh, young fighter, Joe List is a good comedian. And then they said, do you think there was a better example you could have used? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Guys, I was on the spot. I just made something up. And they go, would you like to apologize for what you said? And he was like, no, what? I'm not going to apologize. I just said something. Why would I apologize? Did you see there was a baseball player? Some like third base coach or something? Um, and he, uh, and he, uh, what's it called? He, um, so you know, they can't do it because of COVID. They can't do the, um, the high fives anymore. So instead they do like elbow bumps. But this guy, it's brand new. And he didn't, he didn't understand. So they just do elbow bumps. But he was like, what I'll do is I'll go straight out and I'll elbow bump as people come by, right? But the whole time he was just doing the Heil Hitler and he didn't know and like trying to elbow bump. And then people go, dude, you were, uh, you were actually doing the Heil Hitler. And, um, and uh, he was like, oh, well, that's not my intention at all. And they were like, yeah, well, and he goes, I'm so sorry. I apologize for my actions. Uh, it, was, it was, what did he say? It was something like, you know what? They always do the same apology. Um, it was un, what do they say? Like inexcusable. That was the word. It's inexcusable. And it's like, no, it's not. It's completely excusable. Your excuse was, I told us to Jay today. Your excuse is, uh, that you didn't know that's what it looked like. You were just trying to hit elbows. That's completely excusable. Don't do it again. Now, you know, but like. When you, when you say it's inexcusable, that's what Jay said. He goes, now it sounds like you really were trying to give the Heil Hitler salute. Um, on today's episode, Joe List. So me and Joe and my boyfriend, uh, we're all at the beach, and 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 I'm looking for a fucking excuse to get Joe back on uh, to promote his, pot, his uh, special called I Hate Myself. It's on YouTube right now for free. Um, go to YouTube while you're there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. Do I know? I just said YouTube channel. Yes, I do. I just moved past it. Um, so we were talking, he just mentioned that he was a loss prevention officer at Sears a long time ago. Let me get this. Big Jay Okerson, you're on the air. I'm sorry. I'm recording an intro. What's going on? Oh, no. Oh, we're waiting for you on the corner of 10th and 2nd. Fuck. Fuck. You want to come to the studio or you want to just, I'll just meet you there. Yeah, I'll meet you there. I'm All late. Right. We'll I'm, see you in a few. 
Okay, sorry. No worries. Bye-bye. Okay. Don't die, buddy. I love you. Oh, sorry. Um, I saw a fucking... Nah, I'll save it for next week. But I, I saw a, a, one of those people who were like, uh, will it be okay next week? Yeah, this will be okay next week. Um, now nah, I'll mention it now. I saw one of those uh, peep, those uh, fortune tellers. You know those people who are like, how do you afford such high level... Um, such high level um, real estate when you read fortunes once every three days for 30 bucks and you realize like it's either drugs, like a drug front, or it is a like um, some Romanian gypsy got left this place by her rich husband or it's a way to launder money, probably for drugs. Um, but also maybe for like, you know, illegal um, non-taxed uh, electronics and stuff like that. Who knows? The best of those examples was the old uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle store on Sunset Boulevard. Sunset fucking Boulevard, prime location. And they sold Rocky and Bullwinkle memorabilia till like 2010. And you're like, no one's ever in there. And you're like, yeah, dude, it's a, there's, a, there's a fucking front room that's tiny. I said, fucking, it's okay, I'm, I'm late enough. Uh, and then there's the back room that's probably way bigger. And that's where they murder informants. Uh, anyway, so I saw a uh, a um, a fortune teller. The reason I'm talking about this is because, like, I just found this out about Joe List uh, while we're at the beach. He mentioned something that I never knew about him, and it's like interesting when you find out something you never knew about a friend that you've had for a long time. Like, I just found out Luis Gomez uh, breaks into churches and and and, uh, and molests nuns. You know, I, apparently they can't report it to the police because they answer to a higher authority. And they don't uh, respect the authority of the land. These nuns, these nuns do whatever the fuck they want, uh, but they don't. They don't rat. That's like a big thing in the nun community. So Lewis goes and molests them. Uh, Dave uh, Smith is uh, on another podcast called uh, Legion of Skanks, a part of the problem. He sets it up. Um, so so they're like in it together. And um, I, I didn't know that. And Big J, I found out, is gonna die in February of 2020, the way I found out, so I went to the, one of these fortune tellers and you know how they like half tell you, it's like, I'm seeing someone in your life named, uh, named uh, who's, he's, a, he's, he's gonna die. And I'm like, sure, okay. That's crazy right off the bat. It was one of those like, uh, those uh, the globes in the middle and then, uh, and then you know, the cards and then the death card came up. And I'm like, what's that mean? She goes, someone you know is gonna die. I'm like, sure, I have a lot of drug addict friends. You know, my friend uh, Bird is a, is, a, is a Molly addict. Uh, uh, Joe Rogan's uh, addicted to the to the green leaf marijuana and she goes it starts with a J I'm like yeah Joe Rogan and she goes I don't think that's it I'm like no do you, do you know uh, Joe Rogan's like a friend of mine he's a comedian she goes yeah I, I fucking know the Joe Rogan Experience podcast bro this Romanian gypsy lady she goes I live in a fucking in the world of course I've heard of it She and she goes did you hear he's going to Spotify I'm like yeah I did but anyway let's get back to my friend who's gonna die she goes it's, it's J something but I was like, he's big. I'm like, Joe Rogan's really big. She goes, dude, get the fuck off Joe Rogan. I know who he is. And I was like, what do you mean big? I'm like, big J? Okerson? She goes, yep, yeah, that's for sure it. Not, could be. She goes, that's for sure it. I'm like, what do you know about him? She goes, he's going to die in February of 2020. So whatever office he holds, he will not be able to complete the term. Which is like fucking weird. But anyway, that's what she said. So, um... Uh, and I found out about my friend Joe List that he was a loss prevention officer at Sears while we're at the beach. And Tony was like, what? Is that true, Joe? And he was like, yep, it sure is. And he spent time there. So I was like, dude, I, I was looking for an excuse of well, how to put you on this podcast to promote I Hate Myself, the new special uh, by Joe List. And that's it. I, I can't believe I, I – dude, if I knew that a year ago, I, I would have interviewed you on this a year ago. What a perfect skeptic tank topic. What a perfect skeptic tank topic. God damn. So anyway, um, he came over, and that's exactly what we talked about. He was a loss prevention officer. Uh, the kind of guy who, you know, looks through the glass when you're changing. Um, and then I found out through this podcast that's completely illegal and not allowed in any way. Um, they don't really look through the glass. Which, if I knew that, I would have taken so many more chances when I was, like, in my shoplifting prime. I don't shoplift now because of, like, you know, did I say this already? I don't know if I said this already because I've done this fucking intro five times already. Because, you know, with COVID, it's like these stores, you know, like how can you shoplift now? I don't want to be indoors for that long. 
and you, and you really got to like case it and find your opportunities. You can't just run in and out the way I do right now with stores. You really got to be there and wait for the clerk to look away. Dude, he gave me so many fucking good tips. Uh, another thing the loss prevention officer they covered is uh, is you have to clean up vomit, which sucks. Joe quickly got off vomit duty and um, and moved to just like not stopping people from stealing. Um, but it reminded me of when we were like at the comedy store, we also had to clean up vomit. It was the worst. We had to seat people and break up fights and, you know, shit like that. But like, and, and change the sign, the marquee later. But we had to clean up vomit and it sucked, dude. I remember once Caparulo, John Caparulo, hilarious comic. He was, um, so when we were door guys, what you could do is if someone doesn't show up, you catch what they call a fallout, which means you get to go on with the professionals. Even if you're a non-paid regular, if you're a door guy, you get to go up. It, the equivalent, I, I I don't think you guys understand what this meant for a young comic. It, it'd be like if you were at a baseball game and the third baseman got injured and then they just looked to the stands and they said, can anyone go in? Will anyone be able to go in? And they just look at you. They point at you and say, hey, you, you want to play third for, for, for the last two outs of the ninth? Yes. You would kill to be a ball boy. But who gets to be a ball boy? Nobody that we've ever heard of actually goes to be a ball boy. That'd be cool. That would be cool, but we don't get to do that. So anyway, um, Cap got a, got a fallout, right? So he's got to get a new shirt. You got to get a t-shirt. You got to get like a fucking somebody so you don't wear your comedy store shirt so you seem professional. And um, shut up out there. And I said, shut up out there. Ari... It's not really their fault when you could have closed the window before you started this podcast. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so you borrow t-shirts, you go to like the cover booth and Renazis is in there. Like, Steve, can I borrow, do you have another t-shirt I can borrow? And he's like, no, I can't. I'm busy stealing money from the cover booth right now. Dude, I, I used to steal. No. So some people really stole money from the cover booth. I, uh, did not, but I would steal on occasion. Me and Sean would steal. So Monday nights was, was, uh, back then it was Sundays, um, was potluck, which means it was it was open mic, then employees, and then showcases, and then at ten o'clock officially started the paid regulars, the pros. Sometimes it's a good lineup, sometimes it's a terrible lineup, because some shitty comics back then got passed. Um, um, but sometimes it was great. I remember once it was like Chris Rock, Dice, Damon Wayans, uh, Eddie Griffin. It was just such a fucking crazy lineup. And Mitzi was like, "I make a good one sometimes. I made a good club." I'm like, "Damn, you did, Mitzi. You're fucking." dead now but like back then she was alive and um and uh what was i gonna say what was i gonna say oh so what we do is at 10 o'clock it was like the paid regular starts that's when we start charging cover before 10 get in free and then you can stay as long as you want so it was a local thing where it's like just get it there at 9 30 and you stay till two it was great for no cover just a two drink minimum um and then it was our discretion if the open mic or the showcases or the employees were going pat to like 10 30 we're like well officially spirit of the law not letter of the law we're only supposed to charge for the professional show. So we wouldn't charge till 1030. But that's a discretionary period. 10 to 1030. Now, if the paid regular started at 10, we'd charge at 10. But when we didn't feel it was right to charge 10, but the customer would think we would, say $5. We'd do it with one group, a, you know, a date. Say $5 each. That's $10. They'd pay it. We wouldn't ring it in. We'd show them their seats. I was seating and he was working the cover booth. And then we take that $10 and we go to Pink Dot. We buy a $3.50 Ben and Jerry's pint and, uh, and two big bags of Doritos, one each. We dip. And that was our dinner. Um, God, we were fucking broke. We were so fucking broke. Uh, anyway. Get the rest. Of the... This is not marijuana, by the way. You know what this is? I'll tell you in a second. It's a sponsor. How cool are these? I made fucking grinders in India. I had grinders made. You couldn't make them in America, by the way. You just couldn't make them. For, for the amount I wanted, they were like, well, we can make a Bob Marley grinders. I'm like, no, no, I don't want a Bob Marley grinder. I want a, a, a picture of me, Ted Park designed picture of me. Um, and they were like, no, we could do Bob Marley. And I was like, no, like, how about just uh, uh, the Jamaican flag? And I was like, no, what? Dude, I said no. So um, anyway, we'd steal a little bit. But anyway, back to the story. So Caparulo would go on, right? He went on and then he crushed because you wanted it so bad. A lot of these paid regulars, not their fault, but like they took it lightly because they go up all the time. 
And it was our chance. It was our you're called in from fucking to play third base. So we're giving it our all. And he crushed. And then later he's out front. He's talking to some chick. And, and it's like she, she saw him as a pro comic, a performer, you know. He's talking to some chick. And then Chewy, the head door guy, comes over and just goes, uh, Hey, Gap, there's some barf in the back. You got to go clean up. <laughs> So he had to go fucking clean up barf. It's so demeaning, you guys. It is so fucking demeaning. Do I have a lighter anywhere? Um, do I legit not have a lighter, you fucking idiot? The fuck is wrong with you? Ugh. I mean, I, fucking, no, I have one. Hold on. Hold on. Yep. Remember, so um, so uh, today's episode, I should tell you, this is why I've been doing this the whole time. Today's sponsor is called Cushy Dreams. I never thought that smoking CBD, that's right, CBD, not THC, was going to do anything. Um, I mean, at all. I knew that it was a thing. The Israelis, I believed, were the ones to fucking separate uh, the THC from the CBD. At first, when that happens, I was, Cushy Dreams is the sponsor, by the way. Um, um uh, let's see here. This, uh, it's cushydreams.com. K U S H Y dreams.com. Use promo code Ari for 15% off your first order. So when I heard they were separating CBD from THC, I got fucking worried. Because I was like, now they're going to make it so we can't have THC. Just to keep to help the people with fucking cataracts or sore backs, I'm not going to be able to get fucked up. Didn't end up happening. Uh, was crisis diverted. So that's fine, but um, CBD rich hemp flower, aka bud, and pre rolled CBD joints. Well, this is not pre rolled, but I fucking did it myself because I'm a professional. If I was a real professional, though, I would have uh, been able to roll an actual joint with my hands, and I can't do it. I need a dollar bill. Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. It's cannabis and ships directly to you, and it's legal in all 50 states. You can't demonetize me, motherfuckers. It's legal in 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke the CBD. Ah, you don't have to fucking combat. Cushy Dreams, you can, you can be cool with the other people. You don't have to fucking make a, a wedge between all the people who enjoy all types of under 0.3% THC. Looks like high-quality marijuana. Feels like high quality marijuana. Yeah. So anyway, I thought it was there was no way CBD was actually going to work. They were in a car one day and we're all smoking weed. And this guy Will was in the back, wouldn't smoke it. He was like a marine type guy, wouldn't smoke it. And um, one day he was like, "Dude, my back feels better because of the fucking in the air, right? The CBD in regular joints." And that's only a little bit. And we're like, it backfilled. So then they start having the spread and the spread I used for a while. But I was like, no way could a CBD joint joint work. It's got to be the fucking salve in the, in the spread. And then Cushy Dreams sent me some fucking... Actually, I bought some at a fucking store somewhere, but I never smoked it. Um, and then Cushy Dreams sent me some, and I smoked some. The first time I smoked it actually was when I did that... Um, when I did that podcast, uh, the Inside Baseball on YouTube, talking about my first two sets back from uh, back from like hiatus, that looks cool. Back from Corona hiatus, I just talked about my set. You can look it up; it's on YouTube. But um, when I did it, I smoked a full joint, which is like cool. But I was gonna get ripped, right? It doesn't get you ripped; it just gets you fucking feeling good. So I'm kind of sold. I'm kind of sold on it, you guys. I really didn't think I would be, but it's fucking good. So do me a favor. If you want to try it, help me out because it'll sponsor more of my podcast. And it's actually a sponsor that I'll use and I believe in. So cushydreams.com, K-U-S-H-Y. If you can't spell dreams, I don't know what to tell you. Dot com. Use promo code Ari for 15% off your first order. That means if you order a thousand dollars worth of CBD, get a hundred and fifty dollars off. Disclaimer: I would not buy a thousand dollars worth of CBD for your first order. 
Also, what's cool is you get to smoke. It's like you smoke cigarettes with people, but you're smoking this. So you smoke a full joint, not get ripped. Oh, you know what I want to try to do? See if I can still do it. Maybe I'll save it for next time. No, I want to see if I can do this. Uh, if you're listening at home, what I'm going to try to do right now is do that fucking uh, French inhale. Let's see if I can. The trick is you got to breathe out through your nose, breathe everything out, suck it in, and then be able to... S- okay, here we go. No, <laughs> oh, fuck. <coughs> I didn't even do it right. Oh, dude, there's indica or sativa blends. They come in specific indica sativa blends, like energy, that's sativa, hustle, sativa, relax, that's uh, indica, and dream, that's indica. Because she has a CBD flower in and pre-roll joints. Cool, man. All right, let's start the episode. I want to try one more time to French inhale. I think I can do it. Nope. Nope, I can't. All right, guys, I'm going to the stand. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the episode. Shall we? What have I forgot to say? Follow Joe List Comedy, at Joe List Comedy, um, on Instagram. Fuck Twitter. That thing is done. I would stay off that as much as you can. But if you're on that, do me a favor and promote his fucking special. And if you're on Instagram, uh, take a video. uh, Hold it up to the fucking, when you're watching it, to the screen if you're watching on TV. And fucking... Just a good minute and just upload that shit. Just upload a fucking funny 30, 40 seconds to Instagram and just say, you guys got to watch this guy's special, Joe List Comedy. It's called I Hate Myself. For sure, go watch it. Let him know how you feel. Let him know that you liked it by going promoting it to your friends. He would love that. Uh, He does hate himself, so it would really help him go a long way towards learning to love himself. So, Ari Shafir Skepitank, episode 397. Loss prevention officer. I was thinking, trying to think of a, a, a flim flam man, but it's not that. A flim flam man is something else, and he talks about it in this episode, and it's like, it's like what he ends up like, um, um, trying to like uh, stop people from being flim flam mans, men. But so let's just call it loss prevention officer. I was gonna say ma- man behind the mirror, but then he told me he's they don't do that. There is no man behind the mirror. So Ari Shafir Skeptic, episode three ninety seven, loss prevention officer with Joe List. Starts. No. Um, is, this ha- is it happening? Yeah, it's happening. Is this happening? I don't have a. Yeah, I don't really have a good way in. No, that's um, all right. So what started. do we do about cameras? I just look at all three periodically. No, you don't look at them at all. You concentrate on me. Oh. <laughs> you got to. Um, have you fucked on these cameras yet? I have not fucked on these cameras. I'm not a fuck on camera guy. Even back then, I was never. Back then, I mean, like in my heyday of fucking like twice in a day with different people, a, a morning send off and a night, you know, get lucky. <laughs> yeah, you know, th- four like- different people in a week. I, I, I was never like, let me get this on camera. I never understood the people who got it on. Let me break and. I, a, I want to say I appreciate you trying to push the idea that you used to fuck twice in a day. I have <laughs> That's before. A <laughs> That's a good move. I'm interested in that. Um, why you think? Uglier, less successful you was fucking two women in a day. I, w- I don't, because I, I don't, it's a good question. How did that happen? Well, not uglier, way more hair me. No, but men get one of the great uh, unfairnesses, tragedies of life is that women begin getting less attractive at the age of 15 yeah. and men start getting more attractive at it the age unfair. of like 35, It's completely 40. unfair. Um, I wish that you did anything to make it clear that I made a joke just now? No, I, I see you're serious. <laughs> I get that you're serious about it. No, I, the 15 you, thing. Yeah. You heard the 15 thing? I yeah, yeah, you want, yeah, 15-year-olds are the hottest. <laughs> I did not hear it. Thank you for saying something. Yeah, because any kind of just like, <laughs> ah, would have helped me be like, yeah, yeah. you see? I jokes. noticed you moved over. Is that to not block that? No, I didn't oh, okay. move over. No, we were cool then. Um, yeah, dude, you can fuck 15-year-olds. I'm not going to judge you. No, I don't. I didn't even when I was 15. Um, yeah, me neither. The youngest woman I ever had sex with was 18, and I was 18 also. Me too, but 45. Um, it was France, though, so it was looked down upon there, too. <laughs> <laughs> See how I did a thing? <laughs> yeah, you really bailed me out with that laugh. <laughs> um, 
Oh, but yeah, so you're more attractive. Men get more attractive. Like, you look at George Clooney from 1987. He looks like a big goof, and he's Facts hot. Of Life? Which one was he on? He might have been on Facts of Life, yeah. No, not Facts of Life. I think it was w- Facts, was it Facts of, Life? of Life. Yeah, I think and, so. And DiCaprio, too. He was in Growing Pains. Growing Pains. Yes. Oh. With Boner. But yeah. no, men get more attractive and women start to get less attractive, although now I'm at an age where older women are sexy, like in their 40s. To you. Yeah, and some even in their 50s. Ugh, it's so gross. But I think it, if every people were all drinking truth serum or whatever, everyone would agree that women start declining attractiveness and men get more attractive. Yeah, I mean, if you look at any magazine... <laughs> well, not magazine. Any person yeah. out in the street. You ever see Metzger's bit on Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the the um, swimsuit? <laughs> no. <laughs> when he goes like they ask, he's like uh, uh, Miss America stuff, like legit questions, like how do you gonna uh, what? How do you think we should bring about world peace? And they're like stumbling and stuttering. It's like that, that's a, it's not part of their job description. Why have that? That's like going Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's like oh, you're here at these Supreme Court nominations, but now the swimsuit <laughs> section. <laughs> Boy, he's got great jokes. He has three jokes that I think about all the time. One is the, um, you ever like stay up late and try to solve the Israeli-Palestine problem with Wikipedia? He's like, I think they just need some fresh eyes on this. <laughs> yeah, That's a joke I think about all the time. Last night I was talking about it, the idea of um, like black dick it has a role in, our, a role in, uh-huh. in our judicial Criminal system. Because mm-hmm. I was watching I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is fantastic on HBO. Oh my God. So creepy, so good. But like one of the the male victim that's in there, he was like, "Well, he's in jail. He's got nowhere to hide now. They're going to be taking care of him." And I had to pause it. I'm like, "That guy is referencing rape." That, yeah, he's talking about how this guy is going to get raped. He probably was like, "He has no freedom, and they're giving him three not so great meals." Yeah, no, he's <laughs> like, he can't hide anywhere now. You know what's happened to him now? And then the other one is the uh, the people that don't believe in evolution. And yeah. he's like, the other day I was shaving my back in the mirror, yeah. and I dropped the razor and picked it up with my foot. <laughs> I was like, uh, that's a great one. Michael Anyways. Jackson was an all-time classic. Remember how that one? Were, how was that one? Do you remember where you were when you heard Michael Jackson's eyes? Like, yeah. Um, it was at my dad's funeral, and someone came in and said Michael Jackson died, and we were devastated <laughs> we didn't know what to do my, my mom started crying <laughs> like uh that and and um you ever cheat in monopoly you ever be the banker and cheat just take a little at first and you're like i'll give it back and then like when i get a couple more railroads and then you, you take a little more a little more and uh, people kind of relate to the joke you know they're like uh uh-huh, maybe you know and uh he, he goes into it a little bit and then he goes uh he goes yeah 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 that's that's monopoly and you're playing against people you care about now imagine you're just a banker with right, people who right. you don't give a fuck about. You think you're not going to steal? Right. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Boy, he's really... Really good. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, quite kooky. Quite kooky, yeah. I would say. <laughs> um, I've said this before, but he's a guy, every time I see him, I have to be like, Kurt, uh, Joe List, we have we know each other. Like, I, he does know who I am, so. but I still... like. That's the feeling I get, is like, are you... He sees through people. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I don't, I don't... I feel like I'm like... I. Don't know if he knows who I am. He's got a heavy wonk eye, too. I think he'd be, do good with a real lazy eye. Hmm. Like, it would fit his character. Like, real, like, moving around. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, he's a fantastic comedian. Anyways, what, what's the the visual line? Are my legs appearing in this thing? Slightly, but... Per, per, may, may, you know, do what you want, man. Yeah, my shorts are really climbing up, and I feel like Don't by the end... I'm I'm for sure there'll be some comments on the YouTube yeah, about it. Yeah, it's going to be bad. They're short shorts. You're taking a chance no, there. No, they're not sure. If I stand, you can see these are those are good links. Uh, those above the knees. Of course, above the knee. What I have below the knee shorts. Yeah, I don't what know. What am I, I an just, asshole? Yeah. Oh. Remember the Fab Five came in and did like almost like ankle shorts, and people were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, those are kind of and black socks. Play, they still have mm-hmm. on that I'm still wearing because of them. Yeah. So your spe- before we even start, your specials out now. Came out two days ago. How's it doing so far? <laughs> Wait, we, we did start, right? We did start. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh yeah. I mean, good point. Good point. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, Congratulations, this, dude. That's fucking awesome. Thanks. I think it's doing okay. I don't know. I mean, it hasn't... Yeah, I don't know. What number like recording is this for you? How many albums do you have? I've done two albums. This will be an album, so this will be my third album, and I've done a Comedy Central half hour and a Netflix half hour. Okay. 
and, and now this uh, special. and now this <clears throat> yeah wow. and uh you were there i don't know i'm yeah, i haven't I, there. I haven't watched it i'm just going off the feeling of like that night the first show was like unbelievable and i was like that's one of the best shows i've ever done and then the second show was also really good and fun is that the one i was at yeah 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 and we were like the first one was better yeah, so I'm still going off the feeling of like I think that was a great night, and I don't want to watch the special. They're making me watch it to do like a lot, not making me, but a live. You did, yeah. Fucking chat room. You didn't help edit thing. and everything. You no, just, did, just like let trust no. Them. They sent me. I guess it, I watched a little bit of it. They cut it the way they cut. thought it would be good, and we're like, "What do you think of this?" And I watched like a little bit, and I was like, "Great!" And I had my manager and agent make notes. And they did it. At least somebody did it. Yeah. They edited it. I, I think it's like I, I said. Forgot I was even at the simple. cellar. I was like so excited. I was like, "When did you record?" I don't know. I guess before. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I was there." Yeah, I think it was the end of February. February, and uh, yeah, it was fucking killer. It was like a special night. We went out afterwards. It yeah. was like and diner it's, food. It's weird because uh, that's right. It's like one of the last show. I, didn't, I only did one more weekend after that, and. Um, yeah, it feels like the, the whole thing happened shortly after that. But it's weird because there's a feeling of like I know I killed, and then there's also like so me and Jay and, and Derosa were we got on a fucking long kick of watching a really shitty stand up on like Amazon. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard yeah. That. Some of the worst ones. We're like, let's check that. And there's sometimes there's like a comedy show night, you know, where it's like six comics doing five minutes each and of stuff you've never heard of, um, and. Some of them are doing the best they've done. So there's a mixture of like, I know I did well, but then you always want to be like, but I'm not one of them, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I have that all the time because I'm like, and I have to battle with it because I'm like, I do about fucking 20 minutes of airplane jokes. Yeah. And then nine <laughs> minutes of sex jokes. And I'm like, maybe I'm a hack, but I have this, I had this moment of like, I'm a club comic. Yeah. That's I, what I am. I'm I, a fucking yeah. club comedian. I, I fly a lot and I I have sex and those are funny things to me. And so it's like, it's it's club comedy. I hate that shit. Like, don't talk about sex. I'm like, it's what everyone thinks about all the time. What is the male thinks about sex every every minute ever? Yeah, obviously. And it's a hilarious thing. And then like air people are like, oh, airplane jokes. And I'm like, I, what do you want me to do? Like I fly twice yeah. a week, every week. And I have uh, anger problems, and so I'm like, there's a lot of situations, and these aren't jokes that people did. I'm not doing somebody else's material. It's just stuff that happened on an airplane. People don't get it. People have heard like, like uh, buzzwords, right? And then they're like, I think I understand the whole subject, right? You're like, you really don't. Yeah. So I also talk about McDonald's. So on paper, I'm a great big hack, but um, (laughs) I think. I don't know. I think they're pretty clever. I think they're funny, and um, for sure, as you crush, and you're such a good comic too. But thank also, you. it's like it's the it's so cool that it's on YouTube, where it's like, are there restrictions on countries or no? Okay, so yeah, I had a weird thing where uh, a bunch of people couldn't see. They released a trailer because it's Comedy oh. Central bought it and is putting it on their YouTube. Yeah, um, which I hope I didn't make a great big mistake. I think I didn't. No, they'll have a lot of viewers um, coming out with it. So they put it out, they're putting it out, and uh, the trailer came out, and it wasn't available in Canada and Australia, and then my agent or manager was like, we just found this out, and I fucking like lost my mind. I was like, this is insane. I was like, how would this not have come up? This is crazy. Those are two huge markets, English-speaking countries. And places you can tour, especially Canada. and would like to. It's not... And do. I already yeah. do. It's not like, you know, Russia and fucking Mongolia or whatever. Yeah. I want to um, go there. But then uh, I texted Sam Marill, who did his special the same way. He's like, mine's available everywhere. And of course, I wrote like another email being like, fucking Sam's email. And then they wrote back like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's going to be available. So I love those things. Or the, you, you, you hit the fan. I do it all the time. And then like, okay, we'll just fix, change the button real quick. Let me right, go. Right, right. Like, oh. Oh, I thought yeah. it was a conspiracy against me. Well, in some ways, it gives you like something to be angry about, and you're like, "Great, I'll put all my energy into this." And then it also gives you the thing of like, "Well, of course, it's not doing well. Australia is where it would have done well." <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, "It's it's the comedian thing of like, oh, well, the state fair's in town. I'm like, it's been here for a month and a half, and Bobby Lee sold out last week. What do you mean? <laughs> it's like it's always something." Uh, Greg Warren is a great one of those. And then I had I told the story for years, and then the exact thing happened to me. Uh, where he's in the back of the room at whatever funny bone. They're like, ah, man, I wouldn't worry about it. It's 
Right now it's prom season, so it's kind of a thing. He's like, prom? Like, what the fuck? I don't draw well in the high school. Yeah, and then I told that story for so long, and then I was at a club, and they were like, some kid like legitimately was like, dude, it's prom season right now, so a lot of people... <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess I, I like lost the twenty one year old manager still thinks prom is big. <laughs> but like right. dude, I draw thirty year olds. Well even if even if like the parents were like they would we're, just they could go the next night. Right. Or they don't go to the prom. They could just go to the nine o'clock show after they took the photos or whatever. But anyways. I, I, yeah. I'm wondering how many fans I have or you have that have eighteen year old children. And would make prom their big thing where they're like, nah, I'm not going out tonight. I bet there's some. I bet there's a bunch of people with... I might have some fuck-up fans who like bottomed out had a kid at 16, 17. Yeah, but I bet you have fans... I think we have fans in their 40s and yeah, 50s. But yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> well, that's well, the that's end of going the nowhere. Uh, that's uh, been an uh, exciting podcast of Ari and Joe. It's a one-off. We're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> But I, here's what I want to talk to you about because we went we went uh, fucking skinny dipping the other day, what at giant lake? And uh, you were telling me about that's fucking when you used to work at Sears. Wait, we didn't skinny dip. Oh, whatever it was, man. I, I I don't know. I touched my dick underwater. I had a weird moment where I was just then where I was like, oh, somebody else also works at Sears that you went <laughs> swimming with, and I was like, fuck. By the way, that, that doesn't pick up that what? air AC. No, it's only picking up through here. Oh, all right. I mean, you could ba- you'll barely be able. It's so far away from the mics. All right. Um, yes, we went swimming in a lake. We didn't even go swimming in a lake. We no, went was, swimming in a it was, hole. It was a uh, oh that oh I, I was talking about the beach. Is when I found out you worked at the thing. Oh yeah. oh yeah. We, we swam in the ocean. Too, we're in too far into it. We swam in the ocean the way, with so were trunks. You, yeah. Were you able to piss by the water or no? Eventually, I did. Yeah, I have trouble with it. I've grown a lot mentally, so I'm able to do things that I didn't used to be able to do. But I did piss, and I had to piss outside of the water. How great is it? It's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, I usually have to. and I've done this before in the ocean. I have to physically act out urinating so i f- actually will take my dick out under the water no just so because it feels like peeing so I, <laughs> so i'll be in the water and like pull like the waistband down like this like i'm pissing and then hold my dick with the other hand and spray it around it's just underwater yeah two questions one are you afraid of uh, marine life uh, getting at it um uh, not really i mean it crosses my mind certainly but i'm not afraid afraid because i feel like i don't know they don't fish don't like maybe a blowfish mm? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah i don't think i don't know they i don't think they would bite my dick off but yeah i guess i am a little bit but not overly okay two covid two um just keep trying to give fucking food to a homeless dude he was just going like this and I was like walking towards him, like he'll stop eventually. And then I'm like, nope, he doesn't get the food. I've done that same exact thing, minus the food. I wasn't oh. giving food to anybody. <laughs> just but trying I've to walk see someone and then I walk around. Um, two, are you worried about somebody seeing you with your dick out under the water? Well, no, this is at a more isolated. This isn't like a beach like that where there's fucking five thousand people. This yeah. is in like, you know, just a few people or in a lake or whatever, like up in Maine where it's, you know, quieter. Yeah. Um, so no, not particularly. I, I should have filled you can't that in. Piss there. in your fucking. No, pants. I have serious like mind body connection problem with urinating. Like I have trouble urinating in my own house with really? my wife home. Yeah, like I I'll sit in there for like twenty minutes because I start thinking about whatever problem, and it's the same with sex. During sex, I'm sure you've had that where you just start thinking about you know your mother's. Yeah, you can't stop thinking about it, and then you're just like at some point you're like. Fuck, my bone is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And rightfully like, so. It'd be weird if it kept going. Yeah, sorry, my mom came into my mind. But yeah, so I have trouble with that. Plus, there's waves. Plus, people are talking to you. I've never been able to piss freely in my life. And I think a part of it's like traumatic. I used to have that problem when I was a kid. And yeah. I remember sitting in the water, like with like out in like the middle of the water, like water skiing with a life jacket. Like, out there. Yeah, like deep water. 
trying to and my uncle took the boat over and just started doing like circles around as like a funny haha he can't piss and now i'm like in this crazy like wave pool <laughs> and Fucking it's uncles. a thing where you're like i'm actually like in pain because i can't get this piss out <laughs> i've walked to the beat like i've put shoes on like walked all the way back to like the fucking bathhouse or whatever to go the fuck piss it's called. inside just to piss inside that's that's the joy of the beach is to piss in the water or by the water. I disagree. I think the joy is more the salt and the water and the waves and the uh, listen, timelessness of the ocean. After hearing new details about the beach, I would like to recant my original uh, statement about it being the, the joy of the beach. And I would say it's one of the joys of the beach. Yeah, I guess so. It's nice. Uh, I like privacy when I urinate. But yeah, the spirituality of the ocean, I think, trumps the urinating outside. Sorry to mention Trump. Did you uh, piss in that little serene lake we went to when we went camping? Uh, no, but Sarah did. That later. was the one Sarah pissed in, which is... While we're in it? Yes, wild. And she didn't know that was going to be the drinking source. You can hear more about this on uh, Bushcraft Party Boys and One Girl, also on this same Episode YouTube. Episode one and only. <laughs> one and only. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should do another one. Um, uh, but yes, I worked at Sears. Yeah, so that's, that's... I can't believe I never found this out. You were the guy behind the glass. Yeah, I was the guy behind the glass. I worked uh, loss prevention at Sears... And it's like, there's still times where I'm like, including comedy, ultimately comedy probably wins, but I'm like, might be the best job I've ever had. I think I had the best day job of any day job. It was so fucking cool. And my, plus my cousin was the boss. I oh. worked with guys that I loved, like great crew. It was like comedy. It was like a great crew of like fun, irreverent dudes and one chick uh, who was like a badass and fun. It was one girl. Uh, there was a couple. There was one woman, Lisa, who kind of like she wasn't a manager, but she had been there twenty years, and she was like a fucking tough. Do it my way. She was like everyone knew that she was like the boss of the office. She was a fucking like she was. Fr I was scared of her. She okay. was like a tough fucking yeah, yeah, like you know, short hair, fucking fuck these these fucking fucks. Let's get them. Like it was fun. <laughs> it was. Sexy, frankly, but uh, yeah, she was a badass. And there was mostly dudes. There was a couple girl. There was one girl that worked there for a little bit, and then another one. It was a couple girls here and there, but it was mostly like dudes. And how, when? How old were you? This was in oh five to oh 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 five oh six. A little bit of oh seven. So I was. Um, that's not the question you asked. Twenty three to twenty five. Oh, okay. You weren't doing stand up yet, or you were? No, I was doing stand up. Wow. Yeah, I was doing. Stand up, and my my boss, who was my cousin, allowed me to work from ten to six, so I could better do comedy because I was a, which is so funny because I was just an alcoholic, but I was like I work nights, so if I could come in at ten instead of nine. <laughs> I mean, well, all the open mics are eight to ten. Yeah, so yeah. You can and I mean, go to bed. Well, at that point, I was working. I was like doing real really? comedy, but yeah, I was. Damn. Four or five years in, yeah. I was well, not. That's because you were in L.A. and Boston is like all these one nighters and shit. Oh right. You could work. The Mexicans got the one nighters, but that's about it. The Mexicans? The Mexican comics. They had like a work ethic to like, oh no, I'm getting paid. Oh. I'm not doing this for free. I think that's really fucked up. In what way? I think it's just problematic that you bring <laughs> up um, people that are underprivileged in a situation where we're obviously, you know, uh, I, can't even, I, can't even do <laughs> I can't even do it. I couldn't even like improvise it. Um, <laughs> You're like, what are the terms they use all know. the time? <laughs> what are the type of things? Um Punching down? Yeah, something. <laughs> uh, I had nothing. Um, so, wow. Okay, so who hired you? Your my cousin. So I moved to... I didn't. I never had any planning. I lived in Whitman with my parents on the South Shore, and I was like, I'm moving to Everett with Tom Dustin, who you know, great yeah. comic, who you should have on sometime. He's got amazing stories, but... he's the, He's got the stomach stamp? Stomach stamp? Who's got the... Oh, that's that's uh, Odo. I don't even know what who you're talking the about. the fucking tube that goes into his fucking belly oh, bulger bulger Dan yeah. bulger yeah he's diabetic <laughs> yeah um so i moved to everett and i was like i'm just like he had a roommate opening i was like i gotta move i want to move to boston whatever so i moved to the city of everett which is just north of boston and then i was like i don't have a job i had no money like i was making like 300 dollars a week so i talked to my cousin who was the boss and he hired me which was fun because i had to go in and get like interviewed um but it was like i'm gonna get the job but it was great because it was in some ways like a lot of uh, – it was similar to comedy in a way in that it was like observational. You're just watching people and being like, that guy's fucked up. This is interesting, whatever. Yeah. Basically profiling. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, so that was the job was like catching shoplifters. They had like this is in Burlington, Massachusetts, home of Stephen Wright. Uh, who every once in a while would come into the store and I would just watch him on the cameras and then have to be like, you can't just watch Stephen Wright. I'm like, I know, but he's fucking a legend, man. <laughs> Why not? How could you expect you not to? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, like, we had to... We did a lot of shit. Like, we would get, like, um, internal, which was, like, employees stealing and then no, really? shoplifters. Yeah, we had that a few times, which was oh, great. So, whoa. Dude, it's the be- it was the best job ever. How much did it pay? Oh, I have no idea. Eight Probably, bucks? like... Ten seventy five or something like that an hour. I mean, like low, low money. Did you have so? Okay, tell me all. So it's just loss prevention in general. You weren't just behind the cameras. That was like became like my expertise or whatever. Um, yeah. We also did like if the elevator went down or the escalator went down, we had to call and shut that down and call whatever. <clears throat> and then like we counted jewelry at the end of the night and stuff. And locked up and anything lost. If there was vomit, we had to go clean it up. Ugh. Um, How's that loss prevention? Because someone could slip on it or sue or get sick or whatever the fuck. And prevent loss. Um, one time, just a quick story that came up, and we'll get to all the stories, I guess, but my friend Dave Stewart, who's now a state trooper, great guy. Were we were guitarist from the Eurythmics? No. Hmm. no. Okay. Better than that guy. Yeah. The band stinks. But we were uh, doing battle shits. You know when you shit next to somebody? Yeah. In the stall? We we call it battle shits. And um, our job was to clean up puke. And at one point, I just had a real muddy, mucky shit. Mm. And I wiped it my ass and then reached around, showed it to him, and then stuck it on the on his uh, side of the divider uh, and he just immediately threw up <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like wipe stick splat and it was our job so he had to clean up his own puke which was great <laughs> and then uh i had to come in and like peel it off which was so fucking nasty but it was like one of those peanut butter orange and brown fucking like and i think it was like the combination of the sound and the thing that he just uh, lost it immediately also someone else's fucking uh, yeah it was my mushy poo in his booth or whatever you call it stall Blech. there's nothing like cleaning up somebody's vomit yeah well that was his own but it was just perfect because he was like blah and i was like oh we gotta, <laughs> gotta go get the shit <laughs> but there was like it was improved because when we were kids it was like uh when i was a kid i don't know you were in your 20s but there was like sawdust but now they have like oh to cover up the vomit yeah but now there's like a thing that makes it into like sand real quick wait what or, no we did not have sand. that at the comedy store we had a mop I think maybe I, I might be like remembering this wrong, but I think yeah, I think there was shit you fucking like a powdery thing you dump on it and it so, makes it like just and you I don't can know, sweep frosted it frosted flakes. You can kind of sweep it up, yeah. Uh, yeah, technology is great. You ever see a vomit out in the street, like when you're walking back from the stand or something, and, yeah. and just think like, Who, who's whose night was that? What happened from start to finish? Yeah, I mean, I was that guy all the time. Oh. I was always fascinated, although when I was drinking, most of my vomiting happened the next day. I was like a hungover throw-upper. Oh. I never was like a wild drinking throw-upper. But some people will throw up and then just keep going, which uh, is always wild. What, puke and rally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I remember the first feeling of like, oh, was just, I can't keep going and then throwing up. Like, oh, oh, hello. Right, yeah, you kind of feel better, I guess. I don't know. I never, I was always good until the next day and I'd fucking throw up all day. That sucks. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that was one story. But so I ended up being, and again, part of this was just like alcoholic laziness. I'd try to get out of doing any of the um, hard hard stuff. Yeah. But like right away, I was kind of like a phenom. Like I came in <laughs> and we had Burlington, for whatever reason, they had like the best, most advanced camera system. We had 22 moving cameras and then another, I think, like 60 still cameras. So you could like, but it had like a, a zoom in knob and then like a 360. It would, it was fucking. You could move the thing and like follow that guy? Move, zoom, the whole thing. So you could wow. really zoom in on their pocket and all that shit. Wow. And then you slowly got the skills of knowing each camera, one through 19 were the moving ones. And you could slowly be like, sick, camera seven, go to seven, go to nine. It was pretty fucking amazing. And why would you do that? Because you, you in order to stop them, you needed like real proof? Well, that person would be on the move and it would record a DVD. So you'd want to have every second of them in the store. 
because so like we went, saw it. yeah if it went to court or whatever oh. and you want to have a disc with like here is like especially the big taking ones it, putting in his pocket so you could hand the judge a fucking here's a dvd of every moment of this guy and then we'd try to retroactively find the still cameras of when he walked in and everything you're like here's every minute that he's in the store here's him not with a purse Yes, no, exactly. With a purse. Yeah, and a lot of times, a lot of times it was teenagers going into. They would go into the dressing room, and then come out, and we would go in. Like we'd count the items with the camera. Okay, they have three blue bras, one red bra, or a pair of panties. Then would they'd come out with nothing? We'd go in, check the stall. Then you're <laughs> like, there's one pair of panties, but that's it. And then she's not holding anything. She's got the She's wearing, bra and panties. Would yeah. you like run in there real fast? Yeah, someone if, would get close. So we had people on the floor. Oh, got so the move, be ready. People in the camera in the um, in the room. What the fuck was the room called? Like the camera room. Okay. And then we had little radios. Ops. What's that? Ops. Nah, I don't know what we called it. <laughs> base. It was, we called okay. it base. Base. That's a so good name for it. Yeah. Then we would have radios. You'd have your little radio on your belt. Would you? And then would in, you have these? No, none on of those. It. Oh, fuck. Nah. Damn. But oh, I'd always want one of these things. Yeah. Or like the collar. Uh, or whatever you call this, the sleeve. So then um, if you were in base, you had the radio thing, which is a little, you press this button just like in the movies, and you would scratch the thing. So it would just be like, chuk, chuk. so if you're in the on the floor, you would just hear your radio go. Chuk, chuk, chuk. That way you don't hear like, hey, Ari. Right. That way, so if you're on the floor, you're undercover fucking looking around. You can't have a walkie-talkie. You had the walkie-talkie, but it would start with like, and then no one ever thinks anything of that. And you could kind of keep it down, then walk away and be like, hey, what's up? Hey, bass, this is uh, Joe. What's up? Oh, And then uh, if you saw someone on the floor, you could call bass and go, hey, camera 14, we got a guy in uh, children's clothes. He's got a bed. Like, there was a lot of different tells, like, you know, someone wearing a winter coat and when it's warm out. A lot of times you'd see someone with a bag from a store that we don't have in the mall. So they, like he's got a DSW bag. There's no DSW in this mall. So that, that's his that's his shoplifting bag. Yeah. So that would be an idea. I mean, sometimes it would just be a fucking guy that like a crackhead, um, or probably heroin or pills at the yeah. time. But um, and then sometimes it would just be teenagers, like any like little group of young teenagers in Sears is like no te- no buy? teenagers are going to Sears to fucking buy jeans or whatever. Yeah. Shorts. Uh, it really, it sucks when they ride up. I hate the ride. Those are tight, like hipstery ones too. Are they? They're a little bit tight. Not like too tight, but they're like towards the. Oh god. The hip, hip, hip. It's kind of short. I'm gonna kill myself. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I ended up going there and like almost immediately, I think one of my first or second stop was like a huge one, like fell like a felony, like two fifties a felony. So a lot of people know the laws people that steal like professionally so yeah. they'll steal like a toolkit that's 248 bucks they'll like try to like prices right it they exactly so they know <laughs> what they're doing to be like nah it's not a felony fuck you yeah um but like one of my first ones was a guy that just picked up two huge dewalt that was like the big yeah, expensive the things uh-huh. and he put like two in a shopping cart and then i was like what the fuck that was weird and I was really good because, like I said, similar to comedy, I had spent time in the city and like being at open mics and meeting all kinds of different people and fucking drug addicts and fuck ups and crazy people. And you do that with the audience, like the same thing we oh, judge yeah. an audience. You do with like that, like you're like that guy's gonna suck, this guy's drunk, that woman's gonna fall down. It was very similar. Wow. Like you learn a lot from being on stage, and you're always hyper aware of every fucking situation. And who's where? I also am like been afraid of getting beat up my whole life, so I've always been like street smart in a way. And so to me, it was like easy. But the without really any training, I just happened to be like looking around and saw a guy and like dead giveaway walked in with a shopping cart, just grabbed two Dewalt fucking drill sets, and I was like, hey, hey uh, this guy just grabbed two fucking five hundred dollar drills. Like nobody shops like that. Nobody's just grabbing fucking things. And sure enough, he just walked straight out the door with them, what? and we've got them. And it was like this huge. It was like the biggest stop in months that we had had. It was like four months, <laughs> and everyone was like, vibes. "Joey, you piece of shit, you fucking <laughs> like." I was like Henry Hill, you know, like they like, ah, ah, ah. like it was it was crazy. And then like I think the next day I came in and got someone again. This time it was like seventy bucks or whatever. And then like oh now you're the man. Two days later, I got some girls getting costume jewelry. 
And we had a spreadsheet. Every time we had a stop, you'd write down their name and what they had, and then who got the spot, we called it. And then it would be like everyone's initials. And I had like three in a row, like my first wow. week. And everyone was like, this is unprecedented. This is, we've never <laughs> seen anything like this. And uh, I was like, they were like fucking holding me up and shit. And so uh, it was exciting. And then what happens is like, you're like, you got kind of lucky and then it, you go like you go on like droughts but um yeah so that was kind of like my cousin cool. ended up being like you're the fucking shoplift guy that's you're like don't worry about all this other shit we don't, we're not wasting your talents on vomit yeah, yeah like you get in there <laughs> Mikey, you do vomit you but fuck it. i fucking loved it i mean the, first of all the it must have changed so much that business or racket whatever because yeah. We didn't have smartphones at the time. We had a computer, and Facebook had just come out because I couldn't use it because I didn't have a college. You needed a college email at that time. Oh, still. just come out. Yeah, I guess. I guess yeah. so. I don't know the time. I mean, I'm always afraid someone's gonna be like, "No, dude, it came out in no four or whatever the fuck." But I distinctly remember having my friend Justin, who's now a cop as well. That job is sort of like a gateway into um, what do you call it? Law enforcement. But I remember him like being like, sign and see if you can find this girl, like looking for uh -huh. women because I didn't have a college email because I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, so we had a computer that we would get distracted and use occasionally, but there was no smartphones. But like now I imagine people are just ransacking stores because everyone's looking at fucking Instagram all day. So, but oh, it, so those guys are down like this, like scrolling and just people are just taking advantage. Yeah, I would imagine because... It was tedious. It was like hours and hours of just watching. And how watching. would you not do that? Start scrolling. Totally. And so I do remember like long days of uh, just nothing happening because I worked weekdays mostly. Didn't work at night because of comedy. So there was like long hours of like there's fucking nobody in here. Like three old ladies and you just kind of watch someone. And then we'd go out to the mall. You'd be able to walk out in the mall. He'd be like, hey, I'm going, base, I'm going to the mall. And then you'd kind of walk around for a little bit. And, uh, but when we've had, we had some really fucking memorable stops that were like great did, and exciting. Like, okay. Well, first, did you, did you get to look at people changing? No, you can't have cameras in the bathroom. It's not through the, through the mirror, through the glass thing. I always thought there was like one at a random one where as you're changing, someone's like right behind her or with a camera behind it. No, that illegal. is illegal. Yeah, that's a sex crime, as a matter of fact. I Chuck thought they Perry had men doing the men's stuff and women doing the women's stuff. Still a sex crime. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot for sure. Of new stuff I'm finding out. Yeah, no, you cannot uh, videotape uh, people changing. So, no, bathroom, that's why we had to do it in the dressing room. You would have to. See where they're going in. Take, figure out what they have. Go in, double, and those were always scary because they're stealing it off. So you'd be always be worried about a bad stop, which is when you stop someone that didn't steal. What happens then? I've had two of them, which is that was later on when I no longer was like perfect, the new guy. Yeah, I was like I fucked up. <laughs> um, tw I think twice. One I really remember because my cousin and I made the stop, and he was the boss, and so it was a big deal. But we kept, I kept rewinding and showing them over and over again, and the guy looked like a regular, um, maybe I shouldn't say this because he's still in the business, but um, the guy looked like just like a regular businessy dude. Like, but Lips he, to steal. he brought in his own suit. He must have been fucking trying to match colors or whatever. Okay. But he had a fucking shitty plastic bag, and i trying to remember, he pulled it out and put it back in but the bat and i kept re-watching it and it is like a relatively grainy camera and it was enough that i'm like i don't know i'm not sure what do you think and we both kind of kept doing that like fuck i don't know <laughs> this reminds and me of american you, sniper you kind of just have that thing of like ah fuck it let's go see and then we chased him down and the guy was like what he was like a cunt about it of course he was like what Who's your bar? What is this shit? Oh, I fucking, oh, I'm a businessman. Like, oh, this whole thing. Were you just like, can I see what's in the bag? Yeah. Like, we were kind of like, sir, we need to stop you. We need to check your bag. And he did this whole fucking shit about, Whoa. I didn't do anything and pull up the cameras and who the fuck's your bar and yada, yada. And we ended up having to like, you know, tell the regional manager. And then we showed him the tape and he was pretty like, we were both really good at our jobs. And he was like. We showed him the tape. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, I get it. I see what you're seeing. Did you Don't look at his again. bag? Yeah, yeah. And it was and just it was like, like his bullshit, whatever. Um, I feel like you there might have be been like, fuck, dude. Well, clearly I'm wrong here. Sorry. Yeah, you kind of have to just be like, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, and hope that he's like, yeah, take care. But he was a fucking... 
I don't know. Like I've had that happen to me before and it's like annoying, but you're just like, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah. I didn't fucking steal and it's <laughs> annoying. But he did the like, uh, let's go back to the store right now. I want to see your camera. I want to talk to this guy. I should call the police. I know. But it's like, what, what's the big deal, bro, bro? Do you know that some people do steal from here? Yeah, yeah. And it's you want to be like, yeah, you have a fucking stop and shop plastic bag and you brought your own dumb shitty suit in, you fucking asshole. It's like, okay, we're wrong, but just can I just see it? Right. I, I, I would never let, when I'm Best Buy when you're on the way out, like I need to check your receipt. I'm like, no, I'm out of the store already. I already bought this thing. Yeah, well, I know I know some tricks of the trade now from working the inside. Yeah, I mean, one thing is that like if you get stopped by a Sears employee or whatever store, K- well, Sears is gone now. I just realized. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Um, what are kids jerking off to? If you just don't, if you just don't go back, you can just be like, no, like I have no power over these people. Um, you can threaten to call the police, and obviously you can call the police. But like, how, by the time they get here, I'll, I'm gonna keep walking. So yeah, people can just be like, yeah, no. No, I, I didn't do that. They, you could just be like, I didn't. No, I don't have that. I did throw somebody at the comedy store once. Rogan was on stage. I was working the door, and uh, some heckler. And eventually, he's like, you know what, dude? Fuck, you gotta go. Fuck off. You're you're gone. And me walked over there, thinner than you are now. And yeah. I was like, you gotta go. He just goes like, so he's sitting down. I'm standing over him. He just goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck. He got me. I just, even if I wanted to do something, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it's hard. I had one moment like that where I stopped these two teenagers, and I was like 23, and they were probably 17 or 18. Yeah. But again, I was just like a drunk fucking idiot. Like I didn't have any skill or working out. And there was two of them, and they were probably like toughish teenagers, and they were definitely like flexing. Like, why? What are you gonna do? And like, <laughs> and like I don't know. I was shitting my pants, and we had. This guy, Marquise, who was like a just a huge black guy, probably like huge, like fit, like six five. Who I don't worked know. with you guys? Yeah, yeah. He was on our, our crew, our team, whatever you call it. Okay. And then he came at that just that moment. And I was like, I knew he was there. And but it was that thing of like, please, Marquise, get here <laughs> any second. Because I was like having that thing where like fight or flight kicks in and I'm like starting to shake and like my neck's quivering these two like high school kids are making me shit my pants and I was just trying to be like well you know uh, you, you, you have to I know you stole and you gotta be here and then you just see like Marquise coming in with like cornrows and being like Woo! and then all of my energy just shifted right to them I mean they saw like this guy and were like Ooh, don't call our death <laughs> it was like so satisfying because they played it right like if it was just me it would be like fuck you're right what are you going to do don't about it, me old up. man? Yeah, I'd be like, like oh, shit, I don't know. I'm not that old. Um, but, uh, damn. Yeah, it was definitely um, nerve-wracking at times. And then sometimes we had, like, actual criminals. Like, you had fucking heroin addict criminal people that you're like, we're standing outside being like, we're going to try to stop this guy. This guy could fucking shoot us or stab us, which does happen occasionally. Like, people have Let's been see, stabbed and shit. Lately now, the mask stuff. You see that guy got shot over a mask? No. Please wear a mask. Uh uh. Just shot some fucking store clerk. No, it was like a dangerous. I think a cigar store. Yeah. It is like a dangerous job in ways. Um, so it was definitely nerve wracking, but we had like enough bigger guys. But there was guys that I was more comfortable making a stop with because you're like, they were bigger or older or whatever the fuck. But- I got into a fight at New York Comedy Club with that big fucking white bouncer. He looks like a fucking redneck, like offensive lineman. Oh, I don't know any white bouncers. New York, at Comic New York Club, Club, but he worked in the one on 24th. Um, he's just like I don't know, young baby faced. But yeah, once he gets involved, I'm like, hey, get the fuck out! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's just like all the bravery. Yeah, comes. you fucking loser! <laughs> and you're like, um, but yeah, there was some uh, memorable stops for sure. And then the the fun. I mean, there's a few fun things. I, it's hard to figure out where to go into. Yeah. One really fun thing. A, I guess I have two thoughts at once. The best way to steal, if you want to steal from a department store. Okay, that, that I want to know. You're, you're fucking hidden. How do you beat the system from the inside? I would I would say two things. No one ever did this that I know of. Two things is one, a distraction. Oh. Where like, we had to deal with like injury, a seizure, or whatever. Like if somebody, because that's all lost too, because they can sue. So if a, a rack falls on their head, you sprain your ankle, you slip and fall. That you have one person do that, pretend to fucking sprain an ankle, because then we're all working on it. Because we only have three or four people at a time. Wow. And okay. so everyone's kind of focused on that. And the other thing is minimal time. The most successful things were grab and go, 
which is like a term in the in the business grab and go and that's like a curbside where people would just pull up run in fucking grab a arm full of coats run out you're in there for 20 seconds there's zero we can do so you're like oh he's and he's gone half the time you don't even know we get a call from an employee being like someone just took a fucking entire rack and then we retroactively go to that camera and we're like whoa shit because you were following some fucking businessman with a members only suit yeah and it's a huge store it's two floors you can only look at so much and um, so that would be that combination of those two things would be great. I mean, you could kind of pull up a license or whatever, maybe, or a make of car, and, and now may figure, have, yeah. But the minimal time, because the more, the longer you're in the store, the longer you have the chance to more get cam- picked up. The more cameras you're on, yeah. And the more we're like, what's this guy doing? Why is he in that corner? Where is he going? Do you remember Minority Report with Tom Cruise? Uh, a little bit. I'm not into so that shit. Somebody's future, but he's like this with all these like cameras, and he's like getting different angles about what's going to happen in the future, and he's really just got it all really there. Well, my point was, uh, if you hadn't seen it, eh, forget it. All right, great. It's forgotten. Um, uh, yeah. But yeah, we had those every once in a while. Grab That's and a go, one. which was exciting because it's like we're in, we're on the other side of the store. There's just nothing we could do. Like you're just like, all right, that's a huge loss. I like the distraction thing. I feel like. Me and well, you're too moral, but like me and someone else could go like I could like knock a display over onto someone else. I'm like, oh fuck! I'm like, oh shit! I'm so sorry, dude. While our buddy, Lewis, <laughs> is just taken. Yeah, I would agree. Except you don't go, Lewis. No, right. Lewis caused a distraction. Yeah, someone like yeah. me should be stealing. Yeah, you gotta get. Um, but yeah. I've got stuff to lose if I get caught. Lewis has no future. Right, that's true. He has a child. Child, though, yeah. Okay, so maybe Sagalo. Yeah, Sagalo. He's no one would suspect Sagalo. He's garbage. Yeah, yeah uh, bad person. Things. Stinks. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Stinks. Literally smells. <laughs> um, is that true? Oh, have you been near him? A bunch of times. <laughs> it's not true. Uh, um, all right. Ari said it's not true. He said it very quietly, so I don't want to. Um, are these working? Are they? So you, you always have that moment where you get to in a podcast where you're like, I think this is good. This would suck if we lost it. Did you ever lose podcasts? Early on, I lost a few. Yeah, I lost a Tuesdays with Stories early on, and I remember really thinking that I was like, that was the best uh-huh. one. I, I thought I lost one with Neil Brennan, just like halfway through looking down and the counter's not going on the Zoom. And I'm like, ah, fuck, it goes, what, it cut off? I'm like, no, it never cut on. Yeah. You have to hit record twice. And, did it. and then you're like, and I lost one with Liz Mealy. We did a whole one. The whole the thing fell and just like, oof. And then it was like, I'm just gonna quit. I'm just not gonna do this podcast anymore. I think it's too the, much work for nothing. I think that happened with Nick Griffin. I recorded an entire podcast with him. He was started a podcast. We talked for an hour, and then he was like, "I fucked up. It just didn't record." And I don't think he ever had a podcast. <laughs> I think he really was like, uh, "I fuck love that. those." How many of those podcasts you do? Like, I'm doing what? It's like it never come out at all. Yeah, I think that happened, but maybe it came out and I don't know. But um. The other exciting thing yeah. to talk about was um, flim flam, which I think is a term used for other stuff too. But flim flam in our business, you're yeah. gonna love this. So this was the thing that people did. This was like a scam, flim flam scam, where people <laughs> That's such a stupid term. Would, yeah. um, well, I didn't name it. Um, right. So this was when what people would do was these criminals. Uh, okay, it's working. Yeah, these criminals <laughs> would take they had like sears receipt they would steal like sears paperwork from behind the register like like sears receipt paper and then they would print up a thing they would call businesses always bars or some kind of big business and say hey i'm calling from sears this is uh ari shafir i work at sears we have a big discount on tvs where we know you have a bar we're going to sell you 15 big screen flat screen tvs for eight grand or some crazy price, and uh, you pick them up. It's cash only. These are old TV, whatever bullshit, cash only. You pick them out outside these doors, and we had at our store two old doors that didn't work. They were painted black. They were just like, it looked like doors, but they weren't okay. doors any longer. And then they would pull up in their van, and then a guy would be there in a blue shirt or whatever, and he would have the Sears receipt and say 15 TVs all typed out with the thing. And he'd go, here's your receipt. Just give me the money. And then I'll come right out with the TVs. And this happened. It sounds ridiculous. You're like, who would ever? This happened. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me make I'm sure. The, the thief, the perp. Yes. Is coming in with the receipt. 
He's got a receipt for it. Yeah. And he says, here, give me the money. Give who the money? Who give gives him who the money? He takes the money. Because he's about to bring in a bunch of. Yeah. He's like, so open the van. You I get work the van. at Sears. He's I, like, I, work I at also Sears. work at Sears. Look at my shirt. You can trust me. I yeah. work with you. I work okay. At, no, no. Okay. They don't work at Sears. But are they saying they work at Sears? They're saying they work at a bar. The purpose. No. The purpose at Sears. The bar people actually own a bar. Oh, okay. These are bar owners oh. that think they're buying five flat screen TVs for their restaurant or bar <sighs> at a huge discounted price. And I think they think it's a little Too good to be shady, true. but they're like, wow, all right. And then they come out with the official Sears receipt paper. This perp. Yes. And he's like, here's the paperwork. And uh, these are the doors. And we'll be right, we'll be right back. Just give me the cash. I'll go ring it up. And then we'll be right out, get the van ready, yada, yada. He goes, throws the phone in the trash, the fucking cell phone, whatever, and just takes off with a pile of cash. Into the mall, going to another place. Or wherever the fuck, yeah. Or maybe his car's around the corner, whatever. Wow. And it sounds crazy, but this would happen like almost once a week. A what? Few, a couple times a month, yeah. Wow. And we would call the police, and the police would show up, and they'd go, okay. And basically... The people would always show up. They'd always knock on our window. Yeah. Like five minutes later, the people that were buying the TVs, and <laughs> they'd be like, "I just fucking stole. Where are my TVs?" Yada yada. And they would slowly realize that they just lost all their fucking money, and we'd be like, "We'll call uh, Burlington Police. They'll be right down." And they're like, "What? What the fuck is this? Where's the guy? I'm calling. I'm calling." And they would always every person I'm would call him right now, and you're like, "That phone's in the trash. <laughs> you're not calling anybody." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the police would come down. And the police always hated these guys because they'd all be yelling at the police and yelling at us. And we would always say the same thing. We're like, just so you know, for the future, Sears does not conduct any transactions outside of the store. No, we'll go never to your have, place. Never will. We don't do business outside the fucking store. And then the cops would always come and be like, you thought you were buying 12 TV? Like, what are you up to? The cops would be like, why don't we bring you in? You thought you were buying 12 fucking you flat think screen TVs? Rape victims have it tough. Cash. What about, what about these guys who got swindled to Sears? <laughs> you're like, the cops would just be like, you're up to no good also. You're buying 10 TVs cash outside the fucking store? Yeah. What did you think was going on? And uh, it, But it was really kind of a fun part of wow. the job to watch someone be like, and sometimes it was a ton. It would be like 15 grand and shit. And you see it hit them on their face like... Oh, yeah. It was like, it was fine. I mean, you felt bad, but you were also like, again, you. <laughs> well, you're not liable at all. So it's like. Right. And you feel bad, but you're also like, you're a fucking moron. You handed somebody that much cash outside because they had a fucking receipt. There was a show on FX uh, 15 ish years ago. Uh, it was a British show about like um, long cons. I think it was called Heist or Con or something like that. It was a black dude, was the lead. Um, and they always said, you can't cheat the honest people you could only cheat a cheater interesting yeah you can only kind of because they have to like willingly go into it like with something like that yeah i mean most people i'm sure i don't know what the percentage of them their targets yeah. that are like they're not no. paying full price they think they're getting over on yeah, somebody they're like what no way because it would be a, a big discount whatever um but it was always we'd go and try to find the camera but they were good that was the other thing they were good at being we had no cameras outside that door because there was no door so we didn't need cameras and there. they would meet them right outside that door yeah so they were really they knew the fucking store and then they and then wow and it happened a lot but one time so this is the best heroes yeah so we had we zoomed in on a thing and i'm trying to remember this correctly i remember the visual i'm just trying to remember the whole story but there was a van, because it would always be a van, that always, the people picking up the TVs were always in a van or a truck, and we saw a van, and we like kind of zoomed in, and you could see three guys sitting in a van, and there was like, it was like fucking Kramer and Newman, like there was like a guy in the driver's seat, and the guy in the, this seat, and there's a guy in the back, and he had a fucking club like this. And he was <laughs> doing that, like holding a fucking bat, and we were like convinced, we were like, these people are about to get flim flammed and they showed up like knowing like the guy had a fucking baseball bat like they're gonna rob right, us let's see what happens if they, like they must have known like we're trying to buy 10 tvs cash <laughs> this is shady but we're gonna fucking destroy this guy if something happens and nothing i don't think anything ever came of it and it might have just been a coincidence maybe i can't remember fully but i just remember us watching these three people and they kept looking around 
in a van and we're like I guarantee those people are here to buy TVs uh, I keep thinking of titles so it's flim flam man um, but yeah that was a that was a fun part but it got it happened so often that we were like you'd end up just being like get a knock on our window would slide it open and they'd be like someone just took all my men and we'd be like flim flam someone wanted to take this wow. call BPD we got a flim flam alright yeah yeah sir we'll be right with you Burlington Police is on the way and uh and like, no, they, no 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 just the tv's please like, oh okay yeah. i got two bad news for you <laughs> that's what they would do i forgot yeah but sometimes the, the before deal was they, ended and <laughs> before they were mad they would be like i'm here to pick up tvs and you'd just be like hey guys we gotta uh, just call the cops yeah yeah you're not getting any tvs and they'd be like what who the fuck are you let me talk to your manager like you're barking up the wrong tree you here. just want to be like just skip all that and just tell the cop and uh yeah that always that thing of like i'm gonna call them i'm gonna find them and the cops would just be like no it's uh you have anything on camera you don't great um that's I'd, great do you ever do you ever have a brawl or anything break out like fights that you had to break up no i don't you would have had to break them up right yeah oh definitely i didn't have that but we had some physical did uh, they give you a taser or a baton no damn no and i we, we had handcuffs and we did a little oh. handcuff training which was fun nice Ooh, um, i just but, got hard we never used him. I chased a kid, like a teenager, through the... Uh, this was funny, too. Because at the time, I was like out of shape. I had stopped running and was drinking. And he was young. And I chased him and chased him and chased him. And finally, we caught him. But I was so fucking out of breath. But trying to be cool and tough and being like, you're a big troll. You fucking... You keep living like this. You're not going to... You're just going to end up like shit, man. And it was just like so hard, trying so hard to be cool, oh my God. Yeah. but being like fucking completely out of breath and like, all right. And the kid was like not even sweating. And I'm like, we're going to bring you back. <laughs> well, you better ship up and shape up or whatever, whatever the fuck shit. Um, but another fun thing was internals. What does that mean? That was people stealing at work there. Oh, yeah. And then we had this fake. And this is where I really thrived. We would have all these dvds and a file and some of them some of it was real paperwork and stuff but a lot of it was just bullshit like my cousin would be like dude just bring in he's like when we're interrogating him in the middle of it i'm gonna say joe go get the thing you go and get this file and just come back and throw it on the desk and then just sit back down and it was like it was just nothing it was just horse shit nice and uh it was so fun i was like oh god i love this that's fucking great great so i'm like sitting that's there great. and he does all the talking and i'm just like this you know and it's like some 70 year old kid shitting his pants and then he'd be like joe go get them I'm like yeah i'll be right back and then i would go and like wait outside the door and then open it and be like throw it down and i'd throw it in a way that it would like slide and like a dvd came sliding <laughs> sit back down and the kid would be like, and would have to we had an idea of how much they stole, but you'd try to get them to admit how much they stole because you could get more. You could get it up. They stole more than we we're even aware of because it takes before a long time. Before you suspected time. them, they must have been stealing. Oh, totally. There was one woman that was like, I felt bad for her because she was like a middle-aged woman and she seemed like she was like, I don't know, on the spectrum, a little off Yeah. and had worked there for like 20 years and obviously just wasn't making enough money. Sears pays shit. Life is hard. Fucking, you know, I'm a liberal. And... We notice slowly, like when you're doing the register, it takes a fucking while to be like, all right, we have registers off and everyone works a different register every night. And you'd be like, this register's off $20 this night. This register's off $40 this night. This register's off $80. Now it's $10 here, five, twenty, all these nights. And you'd have to go through Who all worked? of those things and be like, all right, let's figure out all the employees that were working this night. Uh, because most mul mul multiple people use the same register. Yeah, multiple people use the register, whatever. Yeah. And when it was too much to go through every transaction and see who signed in. And you'd slowly be like, okay, these five people maybe were working that night. And then we would be like, we have a pretty sure this woman was working. It's this woman because she's in that department, whatever. And so then we would do like a stakeout, basically is just have the fucking camera for her eight-hour shift. We would just watch that register with the camera zoomed in on that till. And it was so fucking cool, so fun. And then eventually, blah, 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 credit card, credit card, cash, this, that, that. And then you just go, whoop, there it was. And you just see her like palm just a fucking 20, put it in her pocket, keep moving. And at that point, she was so slick at it. And you're like, there we go. We got her. Wow. And she That's just kept it. going. And then you would just go down there. And it was such a great video. It almost gives me like goosebumps, which is like embarrassing because 
I remember watching the video and it was like zoomed in on the till. You see her take it, and then the next transaction it opens, and then you don't. It's close up, and you just see my cousin's hand come in and just slam the drawer shut, and then it like pans out. She's like, oh, and she starts like crying because right away, as soon as he shuts that drawer, he just grabs her, takes her in the back, and she knows she's fucked. Yeah, she's like, like, what the fuck? Oh shit! Yeah, you're like, oh fuck, the jig is up. But you feel bad. She's I mean, so- I felt bad because yeah. it's like this woman that obviously is like trying to fucking steal that extra money, whatever. Uh, but you know, you're not allowed to do that, right? Um, it, but- it, it's it's she's crying too. That's, I think that, she that's, was crying. She was shaking and upset, and like everyone yeah. thinks they're going to jail and the whole thing. And my cousin too. I mean, like we're all very like compassionate, you know, people. Yeah. So he always was like went as easy as possible, but you'd write up a deal of like, hey, you got to pay this money back, like, or else we're gonna have to fucking call the police. Could could you let people go? Did you have the discretion to say? I'm not going to say anything to your parents. I'm not going to. I'm not going to fire you. Well, teenagers, we had a thing. Would make he made them write an essay. It would be like a thousand word essay. Where you got to bring it back, and some of those were fucking hilarious. A part of that was like just for us, <laughs> our entertainment, because some of them, I mean, some of them are kids that are fucking retarded. Like they're like they're right. fucking idiots. And so you read it, and you're like, Jesus Christ, this is bad. There's no future. Uh, some of them were like really genuine, and like I think there were some people that wrote letters like years later that were like that really helped me and turned me around and shit parents would write letters to come back with the parents and apologize so that was good when they wrote letters years later and said they really turned me around was it part of you did you want to tell them like oh i I actually don't care at all well that was turned it around i was just having fun that day for myself that was hard i remember one time talking to my friend john hickey who was like uh from charlestown projects and was kind of like a like a, a gangster a kid and I remember him like explaining to me, like came over to my house, we were all hanging out and drinking and he's like, you're a fucking rental cop, dude. He's like, fuck you. He's like, these people are fucking, you work for Sears, you work for the man. And I remember like being like, fuck you, you can't just, steal. but also thinking like, yeah, no, it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm like fucking over these young I mean, you're not putting it's a hard. thumb down on anybody. You're like, don't steal. Yeah, it's torn, you're torn because you're like, I get it, um, it's just my job. It's my gig for ten dollars an hour. Yeah, that I'm like, fucking call the cops on this guy, and maybe their lives are fucked up because of it. But you know, Already. you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. You can't steal. Um, but I don't know. It was weird. I guess I had, yeah, I had some like some moral things. Uh, I guess I would I would whatever. feel like I would I'd be like, all right, get out of here. Sometimes and other times I wouldn't, and it would be based on like my own internal. Yeah, a lot of times we would do that. If they were fucking assholes, you're like, fuck you, fuck this guy. But a lot of times it's like, we got our shit back, and we get to register it in our thing of like, you know, you get graded as because it's a corporation. And also, for my cousin, like, you have to do it because it's like, that's his job. He's going to lose his job. He's like, yep. I have to have the And we were the best store. We were the best Sears in New England. It was like... We were always number one or number two in like... In what? Catch, S- catching S- shoplifters S- and like preventing loss. Do you have quotas? Have to I don't catch think we didn't have quotas, but like they had like goals, and also it was like it was a a big picture thing of like law, like loss included theft and whatever, and a lot of it was like preventing and like putting spider wrap they called it that that wrap that alarm sets off an alarm, you know when you go to like um, if you go to like Best Buy or whatever the fuck yeah. PS fours have a black thing attached to it that they have to take off. Oh. It's called spider wrap. And then you'd also have a thing that'd also be like the um, the shit of where to place stuff of like move these drills away from the door because they're too big and too easy. Yeah, put too expensive. this over here. Put those in the back, and then put a mattress kinda, by the door. Nobody's running in right, and jumping. Right. Yeah, a display over in this way, and this kind of blocks that exit a little bit. And then put this camera here, and then um, during Christmas time we had what we called the red coats, and I don't mean the British Army, folks. Uh, but you'd have we had like fake security where we would just hire people literally to have red jackets on that said Sears security and walk around just as a deterrent because the stores were so busy so you'd get like we'd get like senior citizens they they'd just, get 875 to walk around with a red jacket on wow so just people would be like oh shit there's a fucking you know old asshole over there that's my favorite of those is when you see a parked car cop car in a, in a in a speed trap area and then you like slow down and you're like that's a dummy in the car yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, it worked, I guess. Yeah, just like deterrent shit. So um, I got really into it. It was like really fun. And then also, 
we were like the coolest kids in school because we were the fucking lost prevention. Everyone was kind of like afraid of us. They're like, oh shit, because oh, they didn't want to get, because they knew we were watching you were, them. We were internal affairs. Yeah, so we were like, cool. <laughs> and then like, there was times where we had, we had like after uh, hour events where we had to move cameras and that was like, we'd bring like, I don't want to get it, but I'll probably get my cousin fucking, oh, Sears is gone now. Yeah. But like, we'd bring beers in and fucking have a great time. And then Sears sold like scooters and shit. We'd be riding scooters no, after fuck. hours in the mall and like what? fucking hide and seek and like, all this uh, crazy shit. Uh, gremlins? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, taking have, equipment out and jousting. Oh, we had a fucking great time. I mean, then like, there was so much like, you know, you put your balls on the guy's fucking shoulder and like, Love Sundays were amazing because you got time and a half in Massachusetts. Like, did, I don't know. That, that, I guess that wasn't in every state. Not uh, not just for Sunday. Yeah, it was like it was a Sunday you made time and a half. Wow. And Damn, then, what a fucking Puritan area. So everyone wanted to work Sunday, so there'd be like seven of us, and it was just a fucking party. It was so much fun. Damn. And we'd do all kinds of crazy shit, and we had access to the back, and we'd be, you know, on those carts and slamming each other into <laughs> stuff and put on bike helmets. It was great. It was fucking... It was madness. Oh, it's so much fun. And you, you know if like the... John Sears came in and he'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, <laughs> it was he's like... not coming in. But that was the thing is like, we were the ones kind of running the store. It was so, so fun. And like, just a great group of guys. Like, I'm still good buddies with uh, a few of them. Damn, that's so cool. That's so fucking cool. Uh, did you use racial profiling? Was that a thing back then there? Yeah. Austin, you got to assume. Uh, well, I mean, it's hard. Like, we had a bunch of black people that worked in our office yeah, and they would do, and they would make it would always be funny because they'd be like, uh, and then it would be so much funnier because they'd be like, hey, uh, just watch the black guy there. <laughs> we'd be like, all right, <laughs> which one? And the you'd kind of wait black. for somebody to say it. But also, the other thing was, the Burlington Mall was like fucking white. That's a it's a white fucking area. So like a black person would kind of stick out just in general. Um, but uh, yeah, it, honestly, we didn't have that many black people walking in like the, but there was definitely times where i was like oh what do we got on ca- oh, that's that's uh my yeah. case <laughs> <laughs> like that definitely happened. And, and, got uh, shaken down 20 times but it's like yeah. i told you i work with you and uh and and linton is that his name linton god i haven't thought about this in so long linton is a cool name yeah oh he was super cool there was a great moment he had um he just wore sunglasses all the time i yeah. don't know why i don't know if he had an eye issue or what but at one point, there was a big to-do, and the cops were involved because it was like a big um, felony. The guy stole a bunch of shit, and he was wanted or whatever. And for whatever reason, it was just chaos out there. And the cops all knew us because they would be over there. And he was like, Linton, grab, the, grab my fucking cruiser. Bring it over here. And so there's a video of Linton who was like a cool black guy. I don't know however you describe I don't know what the PC, like dressed cool hat whatever and Luca, his sunglasses Lucas brother. and he just gets in the fucking yeah like a lucas brother and he just gets in the cruiser and just he's just driving the cruiser <laughs> over and you're like this is like amazing this is like a magical <laughs> video um but yeah i mean the job is profiling and this is where it comes trick i mean we could get into a whole deeper police conversation about this now but like that's the job is profiling whether it be racial or, or otherwise like you're like this guy looks fucking dirty he's got whatever beard his shoes untied, whatever, like all of that so Rambo security starts. is fucking profiling. It's just that. It was like, uh, hold on, check this dude. You're not looking at like old ladies. Yeah, although old ladies did steal. We'd catch old ladies quite a bit. A lot of old people would steal because really? I think because they're on fixed incomes or maybe they're bored or whatever. But yeah, we got old ladies all the time. A lot of people would use their kids. Like they would use, they put, put it under the stroller and shit, and we would always be like, we sh- could call DSS on you. You can't fucking wow. do that shit. And then we had there was a guy that was like a creepy pedophile guy that would show up occasionally, and that was fucking weird. Damn, bro. And uh, one time we saw a guy that had a handgun on him, which is illegal in Massachusetts. We called the police, and that was fun. It was pretty great. And a lot of the cops hated us. They like didn't want to get called. They're like, why are you bothering us? But there was one cop that he'd. He always came and he's like, you guys fucking bought me a boat last year. He's like, I did so much overtime for them. Like they just come and they fucking, they charge the person for stealing, whatever. Overtime. What, yeah. Paperwork? Because they have to go to, the cop has to go to court for the thing. Damn. Interesting. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah. Keep calling. Anytime I'm here, I'll fucking always respond. Uh, but it's just a matter of work. It's like, do they want to go do that paperwork and shit? Yeah. So some cops were like grateful for us. Did you ever have to, or excuse me, get to rough anybody up? 
I didn't, but people what? did. People did? Yeah, people did. I mean, I wasn't tough, and I just didn't have a lot of those instances, but we definitely had a few where it was like um, my buddy, uh, I don't know. Again, I don't want to say his name because I think he's still in the business, but yeah, he was a fucking... He was a tough customer, and I think there was there was a few, there was a few physical things yeah. that was pretty fun, and uh, you'd have to like hold people down or keep them uh, apprehended until the cops got there. And we shit. did that once at the store. Somebody was going crazy, and somebody had to like this guy PJ, I think, sat on a guy. The guy was stumbling. He's like, "I'm not getting up until you stop struggling." Yeah, I think there was a few of those, and uh, yeah, it was pretty great. I mean, it was Damn. like glorious and fun. But now I feel like. I'm actually like a bigger pussy now because like you have more to lose as you get older. I'm like, I'm not fucking stopping because he's shoplifting. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But at the time I was like, I was in. I was like, yes, let's fucking get him. Now I'd be like, who gives a shit? I hate yeah, corporations. Like guys, exactly. I fucking hate these places. <laughs> they're upcharging. They're fucking everybody. They're making billions of dollars. And the people are just poor trying to take a little bit back. So what do you think of this scam to take Sears down further than they already are? Go to the trash can outside. Just reach in and grab whatever receipts are right outside the door. And you give that to someone else. And whatever it says on there, a pair of jeans. And then you're like, here, Joe, here's a receipt. You know, because you might get me on camera reaching in. So then I have to hand it off to you or Lewis or whatever. And, um, and then you go in with a receipt. Just go get that thing of jeans. Yeah, that happened so all the time. Return these. Yeah. How'd you stop that? That was uh, that's a tough one. They're shopping around, and then eventually they're just like at the return counter. Yeah, that happened a lot. People would pick stuff up and then go and return it for store credit, store and that was credit. the thing we'd have to keep an eye out for as well. And then I think people would sell the store credit, credit, yeah, even. sure, yeah, or fifty cents on the dollar. Yeah, there was a lot of shit like that. There was a few other scams that I'm like trying to remember, but there was definitely a lot of people that were fucking like drug addicts that were in there stealing for their fucking drug money, and then like I said, a lot of teenagers. And then there'd just be random old people. Some people just steal. Like, sometimes you'd just get people that were, like, 45-year-old housewives or businessmen that are like, yeah, fuck. Sorry. You got me. Like, I remember a guy, yeah, a guy like you, but cooler, just, like, stealing DVDs or whatever. And he was just like, shit. He's like, I'm, I'm sorry. And you're like, why were you stealing? Did you get a money? And he's like, no. Yeah, I think people are just fucking bored, whatever. It's fun to steal. Or maybe they're just like... Fuck these corporations. I do it at the airport. I'll take a magazine or whatever because I'm just like, this is insane. If it got, I don't know if it's LaGuardia or JFK. And you walk in, you got to walk through and then to the left and all the way around. And over here, to the, it's this big buffet thing. Yeah, yeah. And you can just take that and go. They're starting to crack down now, I think. Yeah. Well, or, what or I'll right do before. is I've done it before there because, and I've had people email me like, dude, the rent in those airports is so crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Who, who, who knows what the rent is in an airport of your followers? I, I don't know. Shut but, up. But like, you're like, I get two scoops of scrambled eggs and fucking hash home fries or whatever. Yeah. And it's literally like 18 bucks. So I'm like, I'm taking this bottle of water and I'm putting it in my backpack because the bottle of water costs three fifty as well. On. Yeah, I'm like fuck off. Yeah, um, but yeah. So I'm, I'm not. Here's my thing. I'm never gonna buy the neck pillow. So the only way I can have it is to steal it. That's it's a good just point. Too, too much. Thirty bucks. No way. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta take things. You know. Um, yeah. The neck pillow is the easiest one. You put it on your carry on bag and then just and then just be wheeling around looking for stuff. Yeah, but those neck pillows suck. Yeah. So you throw it away. You use it once. I just had a thought. We gotta what? get Sundays and cones after this. You're so close. How do you not eat there every day? Um. Well, right now I'm on the Slim Fast diet, so I can walk with you, but I can't get one. Really? You get 250 calories. I can look at the caloric intake there. You can get 250 calories of snacks split out throughout the whole day. I did have. Why are you one on baby diet? Because Jay and Soda are doing it, and and we all got doing it together. Because Peter DeLuise on 21 Jump Street lost 40 pounds in the off season. I think you do too many things like this. Yeah. Listen, it's stupid. There's no bits to do. I can't run bits, so I do these things. Um. Anyways, I'm trying to think of other fun nuggets. I like the idea of a podcast that just really fades out to like, yeah, like a mushroom trip, where eventually you're just like, mm, do you guys want to do anything else? Or, and then one guy goes home, and it's like, yeah, I guess I could watch TV. Um, but uh, yeah, it was great. Do, do, have you learned anything from there that helps you steal now, or would help you steal now if you stole more? We already talked about this. I know, but like, what else? It's sh- stores. I mean, is the distraction thing. The yeah. oh, um, you're right. We did already talk about it. The distraction. The distraction's a good one. Grab and go is definitely the most efficient. I'd be too worried about distraction 
of them going like, ah, what was this? What was this whole thing you guys pulled? You what do you mean? Him. Well, the other guy never even gets caught. I mean, the other person, well, you wouldn't even know. Oh, right. The other person just walks in as fat. Like I said, the, the minimal time in the store, the better. And less time on cameras. Yeah, you just walk in, fucking pick up a thing. Because as soon as you start looking around and you're like, fuck, who's that? What's this? It's noticeable. Someone Here was a good one I used you. to do all the time. They used to put belts on pants when they were hanging up. You try the pants on, switch the belt to your own, and then put the pants back. Yeah, that's not bad. Because they're like, how many items? Two? Like, here's two? Cool. Got it. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, there's this, this definitely ways. I always thought this was a way to steal what? a Coke. Ooh. I know a question. Yeah. Was uh, you'd go to Burger King drive through They always hand you the drink before you hand them the money. Like, you can get a free soda that way. Hand you drink and you speed off? You order, and the first thing they do is they open, like, you're handing them the money, they're handing you the soda at the same time. So you can kind of have the cash the in your hand, take the soda, and just leave. But a Coke at Burger King costs fucking two and a quarter. It's not worth the... Uh, I know somebody who got on the, a Whole Foods, like, do not serve this person, and they got caught. And they were like, oh, there was two. One was like they saw a picture of themselves, and they were just like, nope, and turned right back around, like never was Whole Food again, <laughs> you know. And then um, another one was like, ma'am, we we caught you as <laughs> a friend of mine's boss, and uh, we caught you. You put like some food in your in your pocket and paid for the rush. He goes ah, fucking, which is one of my moves. Like sorry, airhead, I needed my hands. Like we've seen you do this fifteen times. <laughs> we have it on camera. We want uh, you to come great. in and try the same thing. Yeah, I've done a similar move to that. Well, you just, like I said, like you hold a magazine, and then you're like, oh, fuck me. Yeah, just God forget it. it. If they catch you, you're right there to pay. Yeah. Um, or the bottom shelf of the cart. The underneath. That was another big move at Sears. Forget. That was a big move at Sears that people would do, is throw it underneath, and we weren't falling for that. Oh. And it was always fun to grab that um, the carriage and just spin it around, that 180. It was so, such no, a fun no, move. I'm, yeah, we were I, just like this, nope. And then they're like, fuck. I would love to see the slowdown of one second split up into 20 seconds. And just like pushing, pushing. Hey, this is turning. Hey, what's that guy do? Oh, fuck. Oh, it's fun. Well, you've <laughs> How seen, can I get away? You you've know? seen the video of me streaking through the Sears, right? No. I think I put, I put it on my Instagram. It's on my Instagram. What? Yeah, so when I was leaving, we decided it would be really fun. It was like one of those Sundays where I was like, why don't I run naked through Sears? That's how it started. With people in there? Yeah. And then my friend Dave, who's now a state trooper and Stewart. had passed the uh, bar exam. Wait, you know his name? I because already said his name. Because he's a guitarist for the, for the Eurythmics. Ah, shit. Maybe I should bleep his name because now people can look up state trooper. I guess I didn't say anything bad. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> and then the Eurythmics, there's a lot here. <laughs> there's Fuck, a lot. They can figure out. I mean, you already said I don't it think before. I say anything bad about him, right? Not yet. Just that I stuck shit on the stall and he threw up. That you can't get fired for throwing up on no, so much shit in your stall. Let me think of what else I said. I wonder if there's any precedence to shit and stall. Well, here's what I have to he remember. He did clean up the throw up, though. He never did anything wrong. So, what could I have possibly said? It's cancel culture. Who knows? We never did anything wrong other than wiping my ass, sticking it on the thing, and then he <laughs> threw up. In certain circles, they would, they would not be happy with that. I did say balls in the shoulder, but I didn't get specific of who did that. Dave never did that. Um, but he did fart, and they smelled bad. All right. I think I'm good to proceed. Okay. Now I don't even know what the fuck story I was telling. Oh, so I was going to streak to the Strick. store naked, yeah. and Dave, who had recently passed the bar exam, was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't run through naked. That's a sex crime. You, you're na it's indecent exposure, the whole thing. And you're like, indecent exposure, yeah, but not a sex crime. There's no sex. I think you're. it's a registered yeah. sex offender, the whole thing. Damn, not worth it. So I was like, okay, good point, good point. Thank you, Dave. Good. He's the hero of this story. <laughs> if anything, you should get a promotion. How about that sergeant exam? Yeah, maybe you could be sergeant. Yeah. Well, anyways, he um, so he was like, no, you can't do that. So then we came up with the idea to go get a candy thong at Spencer's Gifts. And I was like, oh, we're the thong. Nice. Perfect idea. And then we had the thing of like, even that could be construed because what if your ball bag falls out? What if whatever, your asshole, Truth. someone could still complain. And so then I decided to get a paper bag to put on my head. And then for some reason, I don't remember who came up with this idea. I think it might have been Dave. I don't know. But someone came up with the idea to write Save the Manatees on the bag. <laughs> I don't know why, but it felt like the perfect thing to write. Were you fat then? No. Were you ever? No. Yeah, okay. No, I'm a good person. Yeah. <laughs> bad, <laughs> fat people are bad and bad people are fat. And that's the facts, folks. <laughs> One time, Red Band said to me, he's like, dude, if I was your height, I would just binge all the time. If you're weight, I would just binge. I'm like, yeah, that's why... 
you're not my weight because <laughs> if I binge all the time, I'd be back to your weight. That's how you get fat. Yeah. Uh, so so I put the candy thong on, put the uh, bag on my head, and then I was like, I was going to run through. I guess I left from our office. And then um, my friend Justin was like, he was going to pick me up outside this door. And I had to have the thing. And it's so funny because I'm naked with a bag on my head and being like this. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> If you fucking think you're pulling some shit, that's obviously you'd have to. If you're like, doing a thing, you're fucking, you're out. I'm like, I'll never be your friend, and I don't care how tough you are. I'll fucking get a gun. I will fucking shoot you dead. And he's like, I'll be there. And I'm like, if this is a fucking thing, if you guys think you're gonna fucking leave me, and it was like this big speech. And he's like, I swear to God. And I was like, you swear to Christ on your mother's tits, you fucking. And it was like one of those things. He's like, all right, all right. And I was like, okay, sorry. Just making sure. And so, um, yeah, we got it all set up and we had all the cameras set up and ready. And I just fucking bombed through the store barefoot, fully. What's happening? Nothing. I'm checking to make sure it's on. I'm always checking. Bombed through the store. Oh, God. How long have we been going? Like, well, that was 20 minutes before that we couldn't sh- couldn't air. Oh, right. Well, don't worry about that. All worry right, about these Sundays so, and cones you're going to eat. So yeah. anyways, I fucking ripped through the store naked. We have the video. It's on Instagram. It's from years ago. But the funny thing is, on the video, people like barely react. There's like one person that just kind of does like this, like a head turn. Some people just walk by and no one really seems to notice. And then these fucking nitwits fucked up and they lost me on the camera. I guess I ran too fast or they just were too nervous oh. or whatever or laughing too hard. So there's a whole period where I just blank out until you see me pop out the door and jump in the car. I want to see the video. I got it here. Let me see. Oh, right now? You want to see it right now? Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll put it on the YouTube. Oh, yeah. Put it on. Well, I should put it on my YouTube. I was realizing that. Yeah. I mean, in this episode, but yeah. Oh, I see. You know? It might take me a minute to find it. Okay. Well, when was it for? Like five years ago? Well, no. I mean, it happened 15 years ago, but I posted it. I, don't, I didn't post it that long ago. Hold on. I should be able to find it. But I don't want dead air, though, right? Yeah, I hear you. Well, I'll just take this time to say uh, that Joe Liss has a couple of podcasts. Uh, you, you might know him. I've been on uh, Mindful Metal Jacket, which Thank is a fun you. one about insane people who are holding on to reality by a thread. Uh, <laughs> another one is Tuesdays with Stories. We hear tons of stuff. You got it? Found it. it. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> so I'm fucking flying. <laughs> yeah, they barely look at you. They just look at it. See, this is where they lose me. They oh fucking God. missed it. So then you see me go through and then come out into it. <laughs> oh, it started over again. That is great. What a doofus. It's pretty funny. And then oh Lisa, my, my friend Lisa, who was great, um, who kind of like ran the office, she came in and we were like, we had a fucking streaker. And she's like, what? let me see the video and we pulled it up and like immediately she's like that's fucking list and we were like ah <laughs> uh, it was great it was fucking uh, it was fun it was a it was a great time damn. I loved it I missed that job did you ever have like a, a a mom and kid or a father and kid there father and son you know where, where you have to be like fuck this is gonna ruin his life. it's not just like he's in trouble he's gonna be in trouble right now no, wait. Where the kid is stealing in front well, of the we parents. We had parents come. Yeah, we had parents come. And there was a couple of times I remember being like, this guy's going to fucking kick his son's ass. And I remember being like, I wish we didn't call these parents. Damn. Because uh, he was like, you fucking piece of... He's like, don't you worry. I'll be fucking taking care of this. That kind of thing. And you're like, Jesus So Christ. you would arrest the kid or whatever, detain the kid, and then say, give me your parents' number. We're calling him right now. Yeah. Oh, sometimes no. we let him go. But yeah, they would have to call their parents and be like, I'm at Sears... I need you to come get me. I got caught stealing, yada, yada. And sometimes you'd wait for like 20 minutes for the parents and all that shit. Did do you ever, during that time, have the desire or was there anything going on of you guys stealing because you knew the fucking codes? Oh, we could have stolen everything. But we yeah. were all like good. I mean, first of all, like my cousin was good at hiring good people, I think. And then we had all, it felt like we had all like bought into the system, the team. Like it was just kind of like... Uh, whatever. But yeah, JP Sears started a company so he could give the common man a good set of tools. We're gonna yeah. carry on that tradition. It wasn't like a corporate buy-in at all. It was like a, we're all working together. It's fun, whatever. I mean, maybe someone was stealing. I don't know. But I think like also like my friend Dave like is a fucking a stand-up 
guy my cousin is some people just don't believe in stealing it's strange yeah i mean we were like adult so yeah i think everyone was like really cool and good and and also i think because it was like such a fun funny group everyone wanted to be in and cool like it was like almost like comedy where it's like yeah you could fucking steal bits but we're all gonna hate you but don't do and it and then you won't be able to hang out with us because we'll all, you'll you know what i mean it was like a thing of like no i want to be cool i want to be part of the right, thing so don't you ever i heard, think you ever de- oh that's what we had with the comedy store like it's not that we can't steal and we did but like if we get caught stealing like we might never be able to go to the comedy store again and that's how much is that worth if we can get like a couple grand maybe but not yeah but to be clear yeah we could have fucking i could have stolen everything like i could have i knew every dead spot in the thing like yeah, I could have robbed the place. I mean, we were like working jewelry. We counted the jewelry. Wow. We had the registers. Like we could have. Were there, were there temptations? Not for me. Damn, no, I don't think so. I don't think. So. I mean, my cousin hired me. It would be like so ridiculous yeah. to just fuck over my cousin <laughs> and then flay. Like I know where you live. Um. Yeah. So maybe someone was. I wasn't. I felt. Uh, I gotta flip my phone back over. Jesus Christ! Seven thirty. What time did you get here? 5.45? I don't even know. 5.30? Oh, I stood outside like a fucking chooch for 25 minutes. I don't understand how you rang it. I rang it a couple times, but I guess you have to push it, like, in. It doesn't make a noise when you push it. Yeah, I guess if you push it halfway, maybe it doesn't do anything. Full disclosure, I pushed with this part of my finger because of germs, I guess, which I don't even give a shit about. That's not even... I mean, you push there, the knuckle, maybe. No, because the knuckle, I'd hit all the other buttons. Oh, right. So I did like a little, it was a bad push, but right. it was nice out there. Here was the thing. I was just standing out there. I'm like, this is pleasant. And then I figured I'm a good friend. I was like, he's probably recording and I want to keep buzzing the door. So I'll just whenever he, whatever. Yeah. I went and check my phone. I was like, oh, I hope Joe. Oh yeah. Yes. He's okay. He's here. Yeah. I've been out there for 20 minutes. Well, but you, know. you were having sex with the cleaning lady. So, um, by the way, well, I should, I'll tell you off air. You know, you don't get paid for this cause you stole me for the car rental. <laughs> We made a deal. I, I hated that deal in the first place. Why? The car rental was... Wa- Why? Because I could have just Venmo. I like to just Venmo. I hate the owing. But then, like, you'd get me, then you'd get back money right now. Right. I would, then I would leave here with 100 bucks and be like, because that money would be gone. Mentally, that money would have been gone. And at that time, I was ready to spend that money. I was like, Let's, what's the money for the Venmo? What's, how much money do I owe you? I'm fucking Venmo me right now. And I'll give you 100 bucks on your way out of here. That doesn't make sense. It's too ridiculous now. But I wanted to pay the money, and then now I'd be leaving. I'm like, I got a hundred bucks. All right. Oh yeah. I hate that. I just want to. I, I never want to owe people money. Right now, I owe Mark Ooh. like a bunch of money because ve- our the Patreon goes to me, and then I Venmo him. But there's a limit on the Venmo, so now I have to this seven days from now. I got to just hand him money, oh, the even limit. though I have the no limit. Sucks. I got the limit's ridiculous. But like at the time when you pay him, I just got all the money. That I'm like, here's your half. Right now, ten days from now, it's yours. I gotta be like, it's like, that's my money like now. About, yeah. Now I'm just giving him money. Paulie had this problem when he did a SAG experimental movie, put a ton of comics in it. Uh, pretty much that hero of Staten Island, whatever, King of Staten Island, but like a SAG experimental Paulie movie. Yeah, instead another thing a, we can talk about off air. Award winning uh, <laughs> director, but like, um, um, oh, so he goes, uh, so he, SAG, which means until I sell this, nobody gets paid. You're doing this on a favor, but we can't have SAG people do favors because like people will take advantage. So, but if it sells, you will get paid your SAG rates. And then a year later, he edited it and sold it, and people are like, you got to pay now. He goes, but no, that's my money. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but they did it on a favor, and he's like, yeah, but. I'm the one who sold it. It was just like that same thing. I'm like, oh, it's God. mine now. He paid. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, he yeah. Paid. No problem. Yeah. Well, but we also owe you more than that. Too. Right. So overall, it's working out for you. But yeah, right I'm now, it's, money it's working this. way, way to your detriment because I, you don't walk with a hundred bucks. I'm making money. Yeah. Maybe I'll Venmo you a hundred bucks. You give me a hundred, and then we fuck in the ass. Yeah. Till we bleed. Buy some cigars and a, and a, and a can of a, a cone. Um. Well, I feel like we've covered that subject. Yeah, pretty pretty much. There was one uh, great thing I left yeah, out. What great, what really great takedowns you have? So there was one where these guys were knocking us off a couple times. They were like a oh. pair, or whatever, and um, we chased them out. But the guy got in the car before we could get to him. And my friend, uh, whose name I won't say, but he's great and he's a fucking madman, and I love him. But the car, they were in like this old shitty Buick. 
and they were like peeling out and my friend was like catching up to them but obviously they were in a car so he just took his radio and like full baseball through like fucking Dwight Evans in right field whipped <laughs> the thing up and just <laughs> whipped the thing we have it perfectly on camera it hit the back windshield and just completely blew out the back windshield nice like, bang like fully cleaned out no uh whatever like spidered and just went to pieces and just shattered they kept taking off and you see the brake lights go on for a moment like what the f- I was like oh we can't yeah. stop <laughs> and they just took off <gasps> and we have that video and that video is a fucking treasure and we would watch it like frame by frame and it's just like him it's the picking winding up the yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah and th- we were like trying to do that we were all like we watched that probably 5,000 times where you're like how the fuck like it must have hit the perfect spot and it's just a fucking radio, like yeah. a, like a walkie-talkie, walkie. and just blew it out perfectly, like a fucking like it was wired like a, with a bomb. Damn! And that was like the coolest because you could go frame by frame and watch the windshield go from clear to white to like shattered to just gone. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and that cost them so much more than whatever they stole. It was amazing, and we had to like kind of keep it quiet because that's like fucking super. You can't. Not against to the rules, yeah. not allowed to do that. But eventually, like my cousin was like thought it was great, and then he eventually told the regional manager because they became buddies, and it's like a legendary video in the wow. in the Sears loss prevention uh, world or whatever. Fucking hilarious! Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Damn, I'm jealous of that job now. Yeah, especially I now there's thought, no work. I'm like, wow, I want to do that. I always thought it'd be a perfect job to have a bunch of comics working there, uh-huh. but. What was nice was it was Burlington, Mass. It was like super suburb, so you had a few characters. But like doing that in Queens or something, yeah. I'm but like, like you I have to not. bring up somebody shooting up in the bathroom, yeah. Like Ugh. and people with like weapon, just like I, more people with more to lose and more real criminals and stuff. Like the majority of our shit was like teenagers stealing fucking panties. Have you or ever seen anybody like an adult nowadays getting caught shoplifting? I saw um, it at CVS. And it was like, she was like, it's not mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. I walked in with it. And then eventually she was like, please let me go. It was like the sad. Yeah, we'd have a lot of then that. The cry, yeah. They have a lot of that. And it's hard not to f- feel bad. Women like, cry oh. when horrible things have happened to them. And then they also cry knowing how men react when horrible things have happened to them. And they cry. So they're like, oh, I can recreate this in right. men by also crying. Right, right. Yeah, it's uh, there was definitely some of that. And it was like, you felt bad. But yeah, uh, no, it was great. I loved it. Well, that's fucking awesome. This is like the perfect kind of subject for this kind of thing. Experience with this fucking topic. Yeah, maybe we should have done it before, but we yeah. did it now. Well, I'm glad we saved it. You know what I found the other day? A fucking acorn from when we did a first podcast about herpes in Central Park. It's one of the first times we ever really talked. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you too well. And at the time, I was like, oh, this is going to be awful because I stunk and your fans are these like savagey people. <laughs> But they're not. They're not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of them are. Some yeah, of them are fucking some idiots. Of them are. That guy, that, uh, well, one guy wanted to fight me on the, or uh, a bunch of people on go that. Go back, Joe. Fuck him. No, that Instagram post that on your thing that like blew up. <laughs> that was like insane. <laughs> Can you say what happened there? I think it's so fucking funny. Yeah. I mean, like. What, what was it? Oh, it was my was nephew. Your, your nephew did a video where a bunch of kids dunked a basketball. Threw a bunch of alley in the air over a pool. And then what, that, what was so crazy about it was. There was no thought in my mind of like, I'm going to post a really controversial thing. I wrote needs diversity because it was like nine white kids. Nine playing. Jewish white kids. Yeah. yeah. And I wrote needs diversity. <laughs> ha ha. I get it. You know how that happens. Yeah. And uh, it's got dude. like 500 likes or whatever. It's hilarious. Thank you. And I was like, oh, this is doing well. And I wasn't looking at my shit. I've been better about that. And I looked and it was like. 97 comments and I was like what the fuck is this and I assumed it was trolls and it turned out I was the troll I was like what 97 comments and it fucking I ended up having like 175 comments now, dude what did he say it was pretty much like well there was a bunch was of people ruining- yeah people there was a bunch of people that really took it serious and but not uh, took it serious and like yeah fuck you Ari it's it's Hey, get this shit out of here. We're all trying to have a good time. You're trying to ruin it with your diversity calls. <laughs> yeah, they thought I was like upset that I, Joe List Comedy, that's a your, friend that's your, of yours. That's your name yeah. on Instagram, Joe, Joe List Comedy. Yeah, thought I was pushing a diversity in your nephew's circle or whatever. <laughs> but there were people that were like, you fucking... And then one guy, a couple I responded to were, um, the one guy was like, you're fucking... A piece of shit. And I just wrote, sometimes I have genuine, like there's a moment where I'm like, 
I'm concerned for you. Are you okay, dude? Yeah. I was like, dude, you're like, you're not well, and I, I want you to get some help. And he's like, I'm fucking fine. You're a fucking loser. And then I just wrote, okay, well, here's the situation. I'm a comedian making a joke on a good friend Friends. who's also a comedian's Instagram. <laughs> you're a person that's upset by that. So, so we make your own, we can make our own judgments on who's who. But so I at think that point, did he go, man, you're right. I will get some no, help. No, I think uh, he didn't. Wow. I think he ignored that. But a few people, <laughs> one guy wrote a long thing, and I just wrote back, I'm kidding. And I think I think he might have deleted it. One, like, I think one or two guys goes, oh fuck. Yeah, one or two were like, been, damn it. Uh, yeah, then, of course. Yeah, because there's so many of those other ones that you assume everybody's being serious all the time, and you forget. Oh yeah, yeah. Most people are normal. Yeah, it was. Uh, I remember really? writing back to every one of them too, and go, and I was like, "Yeah, at Joe List Comedy, <laughs> get out of here with that fucking straight talk, scram!" <laughs> it just, was with oh one guy, one <laughs> guy. Was so fun. This was I've amazing. I've never seen so many likes and comments on a comment. It was insane. But the one guy, this I thought was amazing. One dude went through my entire Instagram feed, screenshotted it, then went to like you know Photoshop or whatever, and circled all the white people in my thing as to say, you need diversity. And he went through it. It was like, whatever, how, how are you lot? Like 50 <laughs> posts that he took screenshots with all the circles of like, he's like, it looks like you don't even know one black person. You're the one that needs diversity. You fucking asshole. Wow. And um, I wrote back, yeah, I was fucking kidding or whatever. And then I, like I told you this, I just kept wait. I, I might've called him a piece of shit or an asshole or whatever. And I just waited and waited until it, my message said seen. And then I blocked him. <laughs> Which was really satisfying. I've done that too. <laughs> that I'm just like, I want to make sure he sees that he's a fucking idiot. Because if you block him before, there's a chance that yours, he never sees yours, right? Yeah. I think yeah. I wrote, Ari and I are laughing at what a dipshit you are. Which is another fun thing to say. I'm like, because they, they're obviously fans of yours and they're mm. defending you. Right. So it's fun for me to be like, hey, I'm actually friends with Ari, and we're really <laughs> laughing hard at what a fucking dodo head you are. Dude, I've had, I've had people I've just blocked them, and then just someone writes me later. I'm like, "Hey, you blocked me. You think you get the last word in? Well, I started a new account to get to you." I was yeah, like, dude, I'm too important to your life. Yeah, it really is like a thing of like, boy, we are all fucking mentally ill. Um, it's some dudes at home in Kansas going, "I'm enraged at this Joe List comedy." Yeah, you're. I'm like, you're too upset by the people that are like eh, this needs more diversity whatever anyways yeah but yeah that was fun oh <sighs> uh anyway ladies and gentlemen which, the new special is out now i hate myself it's out it's called i hate myself which is the second episode we ever did you came over to my house it's called i hate myself we did an episode about how I'm i hate about myself to get some fucking free downloads oh yeah does that will that work? How does that work? People search Jolis, I hate myself, and my shit comes up. That's right, everybody. Jolis, oh, I hate nice. myself. Available on on Apple Podcasts. Nice, but yeah, it's on YouTube. So check it out. I'm excited for you, dude. You're like. gonna have so many people see it, and so many people love it. You're a fucking hilarious comic. Thank you. And so it's like, oh, this is this. Is, I mean, well, Netflix is a big platform, but this will be a, a, also a massive platform for people to see you. And there's nothing going on. So many more people will see it right now. Yeah, I hope so. We'll see. I don't know. It's fun. I hate... It's funny because I was going to be like, I hate myself, so I don't know. But yeah, it's weird. We'll see how it goes. It's going to go great. Um, Congratulations. That's fucking awesome. Thanks. I'm excited. Thanks for being there. And then what a perfect there. time to be out of material to be like, well, to, no one has any material. You don't have to be on the road. So it's well, like... I had a bunch of extra. I actually have material because I had a bunch of extra shit. Yeah. So I got about 40 minutes or 30 You going anywhere minutes. or no? You're not doing anything, are you? I haven't really. I did that outdoor show in Royersford Soul Jewels gig, which is amazing. You should do it if you can. It. Yeah. It's fucking so fun. So good. Um, so I've canceled all my indoor shit, but we'll see. I don't know. Stress factor is whatever. Yeah. Another talk. But, a few things. But yeah, yeah. That were, it, was, it was set up well. Uh, let's go get some fucking ice cream, Let's bro. get some ice cream, dude. For Sundays you, ago. and I will just, like, just longingly look at it, because I have five more days of this stupid fucking thing with my obese friends. Best ice cream in the city, Sundays and Cones, 10th Street, 3rd Avenue. You think so? Just a couple blocks from where Ari lives. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's the episode. Thank you very much, Joe List. Um, uh, nothing else to add, right? No, I don't think so. Don't, don't, don't write mean things to me. That stinks. What? Oh, yeah. Guys, okay, how about this? Watch the fucking special. And then do us both a favor, do him a favor, do me. Send it to a few friends. 
say like, if I enjoyed it, even if you're five minutes in and you enjoy it, stop right there and just be like to your four friends like, hey, this is really funny. Watch it. And so then, you know, or post it on your social medias. If everyone posts, it'll get really like, eventually people are like, oh, yeah, 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 I should watch this. I've heard about it enough times. So help, help out Joda just to get it seen. Yeah, and like it. And like it, sure. Comment and do I think whatever. that helps. Doesn't that do something? Yeah. Maybe comment needs more diversity. That would be a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> if we get 150 comments on the Comedy Central video, needs more diversity. It would be lovely. Um, and any real sentiments, too. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Okay. Tits. Before we go out, we're just main camera. People are Venmoing you. Yes. If they like the special or yes. whatever, are what's we on the Venmo? camera right now? Yeah, we're just doing it. We'll put it right. At the oh, end. my Venmo is at Joe List Comedy, and the special's free, and I paid for it myself. So you a did bunch pay of people... for it yourself. You had to rent all the fucking camera equipment and do all that shit. Yes, and the director Joe List Comedy and all that is, stuff. is your and director at Joe List Comedy. If I'm you'd Venmo. like, I just had a big fucking. That's epic... a member supported way to do it. You just like if you like to fucking hit me. It's like like we said, if if you face a street musician, you'd be like, here's some cash. Yes, yeah, exactly. Anytime I've ever enjoyed a street musician, I give him a buck or two. You can give me a buck or two or five or even a hundred bucks. I was yeah. meeting PDC. We're in a, to Bangkok and we we're listening to this lady singing Neil Young, the entire album, just singing it, Thai lady. And we sat there for like an hour. Somehow, I don't know, some album. He, he's more like you into Neil Young. But like, um, but like at the end of it, he was like, I'm giving her fucking, it was like $20, but it was like, what the? She just stopped. She was like, this is amazing. This is Thai money. Was it like, keep on locking in the field? It. It is exactly that. <laughs> you're making fun, oh, but you're man, just sort of... I look at my... Like, that wasn't even Asian. I don't, I don't know, know what, what that was. was. So yeah, oh, Joe List Comedy. Guys, slide in some cash if you like it. Sure, let's fucking start... That way more comics can make fucking... Great comics can make great specials. Yeah. I don't know. I like the idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, Mark made an obscene amount off Doing of that? Venmo. Yeah, God, just a nice. few bucks. You got a couple thousand people giving you a couple bucks, and uh, it's helpful. So yeah, at Joe List Comedy. Thank you. I All love right. you. I yes. hate myself. All right. everybody thank you very much for tuning in or uh, listening uh thank you joe list hit him up guys slide him a dollar on venmo slide him whatever you think that special was worth once you've watched it um but definitely 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 post about it let your friends know you liked it um tell people on, on your social media who whatever your reach is 10 people 10,000 10 hundred um let them all know that you like Joe Lisbeth, and I guarantee you're gonna love it. He's fucking hilarious. So there's no question. He's really he's one of the best. He really is one of the best. Barack Obama called him a light unto the nations. They said if more he said if more people uh, watched Joe List special, um, Rodney King would still be alive. It's a real quote from Barack Hussein Obama. Um, so that's the episode. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. I don't think there's anything left to say. I don't think there's anything left to say. How about this? In the comments, can you do this? In the comments of this, if you're on this YouTube, watching this one, um, tell me if you ever had a story of getting caught by a shoplift by one of these uh, loss prevention officers. If you've ever been caught, I want to hear about it in the fucking, in the comments of the YouTube. If you're listening, don't worry about it. If you're listening, don't worry about it. But if you're on the Patreon of this episode, um, we have a fucking um, chat room in there. Uh, in there, fucking talk about it. Have you ever been caught by one of those guys? So I was caught once. They caught CVS. And I think back then it was People's Drug. Um, they called my home. Said, uh, Mrs. Shafir, uh, Ari Shafir, your son was caught shoplifting. My older sister fucking intercepted it and acted like my mom. Ow. Need more of this CBD weed. She acted like my mom and said she's going to give me a stern talking to her. And she said, she was like, Ari, uh, you, you were shoplifting. And I was like, no, it wasn't what you're talking about. She just, and she told me. She's like, they called. I intercepted. And I tried to deny it. I was like, no, they didn't. And then she said the same thing. I did it in one of my, uh, in that, um, in the, um, not the Holy Spirit. The, the hiding uh, edibles, hunt for the edibles at the Mall of America. There's a story on YouTube. You should see it. Uh, and by the way, as soon as this ends, 
uh, the next video is just going to start playing, hopefully, or at least one of those two boxes is going to be Joe List special. I hate myself. Watch it. You will love it. If you have a friend coming home tonight or a husband or a wife or boyfriend or girlfriend, wait for them and say, you want to watch a comedy special? Make some popcorn and just fucking laugh your ass off. Light up one of these, but with real weed, not with CBD. Thank you, Cushy Dreams, by the way. I'm, dude, I can feel it already. I can already feel it like, through my fucking body. It really fucking works. Cushydreams.com. Promo code R for 15% off your first order. Use my promo code and get that shit, you guys. Um, uh, 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 uh. Oh, so I said the same thing in this in this fucking Mall of America thing where uh, she goes, she I was like, no, I was just denying. I was like, no, I didn't shoplift. And she goes, so do you think I just made up that somebody called me from CBS reporting that you shoplifted? And in my head, I'm like, I mean, I did shoplift. And how else would she know that? And so then I was like, Okay, please don't tell mom and dad. <laughs> She's like, I've already told you I'm not going to. I intercepted it. Anyway, you guys, that's the episode. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you want, head over to my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Ari uh, I just put up a new episode this week about uh, a trip to Thailand. I do these travel plugs where I show this picture from my travels and I tell a story about an hour and fucking five minutes, hour and ten minutes. Um... Uh, go on there and I'll do that and mailbags back and forth. I, I put some shit on there and it's actually getting pretty good. I'm getting used to it now and I'm starting to really like it. Um, but that's it. And go hit up Joe List. Let him know you like the special. Follow me on Instagram at Ari Shafir. Subscribe to the YouTube already. YouTube.com slash Ari Shafir. That's it. We're done, right? All right. So let's see if I can get this right. I always mess up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 397, Lost Prevention Officer. For Joe List, I'm Ari Shafir, saying so long, I fucking did it! I can't believe that fucking shit. Fuck. 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 No, I can't even curse enough. Okay, start over. Three, two. The di- uh, it's so frustrating.